Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. This is something a little bit different. I've been wanting to do this for a little while. And I've, you know, I've, I've been sort of like umming and ahhing about it. I just wanted to do a little talk stream about just just certain peripheral topics, not necessarily to do with matches. We do obviously do the previews and the reviews. Yeah. And I, I just fancy doing something a little bit off topic. So anyway, before we get into that, Budgie, and thank you for joining me at very Hello. short notice. Um, please don't forget to like, comment on and share the stream, subscribe to our YouTube channel and please hit the bell icon and you'll get alerts on new content uploaded to the channel. And as always, we thank you very much indeed for your support. We really want audience participation here. This is really important. So you guys that are in the live chat, I really, I seriously, I want, I want your involvement with this. I might even, I might even be a little bit brave and I might even put, the StreamYard link. So if you want to come on, as, as look, I want to, I want to try and do this kind of like a <clears throat> a radio phone in format, if you will, where I all throw a topic out there, and you guys can get stuck into it, and obviously Budgie and I can sort of bat things back and forth, and, and all the can rest I, of it. So, uh, cut in for a second there, Rob. Of course, of course. Um, I just want to say that if anybody does want to come on and make a point, and they're not comfortable with being on camera, Rob Turn has got. Camera off. To have you with no image, yeah. Just Turn like your you. camera off. It's not yeah, a problem. You can do not that. A problem. You can join the studio. So, yeah. So I'll get. I'll get. The, there's. There's two topics that I want to get stuck into. Mm -hmm. The first one. Now, we're obviously going through a a, a pretty decent season. It has to be said. Um, and before yeah. I get into it, I'll just acknowledge the guys that are already in the live chat. Lawrence, hope you are well, and Mr. Walsh. All is good. Um, and he's saying hello from Auburn, Alabama. All is good. He's probably got his barbecue on as he speaks. Yeah. Okay. So we're obviously at the moment we're we're going through a pretty decent season. It has to be said. At the moment, obviously the result today was not the best. It is what it is. But we've got bigger fish to fry. We've obviously got suspensions. We've got injuries. We've got a European game, a crucial one, second leg of a semi final. Yeah. On Thursday. So I kind of went to the game today, Budgie, and I was like, you know, what will be, will be. Yeah. But at the moment, we're seventh in the Premier League. We're in the semi final of a European competition. And it just struck me are we witnessing consecutive seasons back to back? Are we in the middle of witnessing the greatest back to back seasons in our history? I. I'm I'm struggling to think of two seasons in succession where you could say that we've had better than what we've got at the moment. Now, yeah. it may well be that we don't win the Europa League. It may well be that we finish seventh, maybe even eighth. Who knows? But yeah. a sixth and an eighth in consecutive seasons in the top flight, that would be quite special in terms yeah. of our history. I mean, yeah, what are your nobody, thoughts? Do you think that we're ago, witnessing the greatest second thought of getting that like this? You know. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean my, my opinion, Rob, is that you know th this could be one of the best periods of the club's history if we continue to grow as we have been. Mm. You know. I mean, do you think? I mean, where do you think? Because everybody sort of like will look at. A, a, a team like the 1964 team and the 1965 five team that in consecutive seasons won the FA Cup, won the League Cup. But in terms of their league performance, and I've got the stats in front of me, in season 63-64, when we won the FA Cup, in the league, we finished 14th. Yeah. In 65, when we won the Cup Winners' Cup, we finished 9th. So I would argue 14th and 9th in the top flight, yes, they, they picked up an FA Cup and a, and a Cup Winners Cup in yeah. consecutive seasons. That's fine. Not a problem. But I'm talking about in terms of league. The league's your bread and butter. Yeah. yeah. If we manage to pull off a, a sixth last season, and a, 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 I'm, I'm looking at it at the minute and I'm thinking seventh 
realistically is probably yeah. where we're at. I th- six outside chance. Mathematically, anything beyond that is 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 gone now. We're not going to finish fifth. Fifth and above no. is gone. Mathematically, we can't do it. Mm-hmm. But we could finish sixth. We could finish seventh. I mean, yeah. I'm not being funny. If we finish sixth this season, having had the European competition, I would argue that this season's better than last. Even I would if agree. Seventh. I would agree with that. That would be, you know, that would obviously be open for discussion and debate by others, but. You know, I, I tend to agree with you, you know, like consecutive seasons finishing in the top six and consecutive seasons of qualifying for Europe and having had such a decent season in Europe this year. Mm. Um, am I right in believing we've only lost one away game in this whole competition? In the Europa League? Yeah. That was the away game in Seville, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only game that we've lost away, isn't it? In in the Europa League thus far, yes. Yeah. So that bodes well for us then for Thursday night's fixture, I believe. You know. They're not they're very actually, they're not great at home. If you look no. at their home record, it's not it's not yeah. much to write home about. And their league record is even worse, you know, than than you know you would give them credit for. It bearing in mind their position in this competition. You know, they're, they're in the semi-final. You would probably think that they would be, you know, fighting for, you know, top honours in, in the league or something, you know. Hmm. But they're not, you know, they're, they're relishing down in ninth or tenth, is it now? What's the best yeah. team that in, in, in that you've ever witnessed in Claret and Blue, Budgie? I'd be interested to get your take on it. And I mean, Budgie, just before we get into that, I mean, obviously I just had this comment up. Walsh has yeah. been going since 86, 87 season, which was obviously the season after we finished third yeah. in what was then the first division. Yeah. But that, obviously, the, the season we finished third, great, fantastic. But yeah. the season after that, in season 86, 87, which is the season that Walsh is referring to there, we yeah. finished 16th. Sorry, 15th. Yeah. The season before we finished third, we finished yeah. 16th. So we didn't have a season either side of that third place finished that we no. could look at and go. There was no real consistency being. No. Played. Yeah. I mean, I've been going since, well, my first game was 66, 67 season. Uh, the home game against Newcastle. Mm. Now, clearly, I was only four years old at the time. So clearly for the first 10 years of being a West Ham fan, mm. my recollection of it is, very, very dim and, uh, you know, sort of uh, unclear because I was just such a young kid. Mm. Um, And, you know, living so far away from the stadium, I only got to three games by the time I was 14. Mm. Um, So, you know, uh, I would have to say, if you'd asked me to pick out individual players and and build a team with basically a, a... my hammer's 11, if you'll excuse me, Russ. But if you ask me to do that, they would come from many different eras. Yeah. But for a team that have worked together throughout the period of their success, if you like, um, it's got to be the current squad that we have now. It has to be. I don't believe that I've seen such... Unity, togetherness, if you want to call it that. Um, mm. That you know, they're fighting for each other. You know, even the guys that aren't regular starters, if they get an opportunity to appear for you know a substitute appearance or something, they are mm. fighting for the rest of the boys around them. You know, yeah. they're not looking for that glory of being the hero for coming on. Mm. You know what I mean? Nobody does that. You know, and and I I, I, just... I mean that. Just gonna dis. I am gonna disagree with you, Lawrence. I I respect your opinion, and and that's fine. The statement our squad is too weak to be good in the Premier League and Europa. Well, I would argue that seventh after thirty five games is good. I would argue that semi finals of the Europa is good, and we're doing both of that as we speak. Yeah, I would argue that that statement is incorrect. You're entitled to hold it. Yeah, but I, yeah. I would argue that the, the facts don't support that 
Mm. And, you know, for the first nine months of the league, you know, we haven't been out of the top six. Hold on, hold on. Is it, hang on, hang on just a minute. We've got, we got someone in the live chat that's complaining. I did put the link on the... Hang on. Hang on. I've only looked over 21. Thank you, Andrew. No, 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 no. No, Duke's in there. I have I did put the, the StreamYard link on, on the group chat, Duke, if you want to refer to that. Um, or, oh, bear God. with, bear with. <laughs> Hold on. Well, I got in through the group chat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take... Oh, look, look, look. He's, he's, he's going, he's, he's, he's going, he's going studs up. Look. Mutiny. Look, <laughs> Duke, go on to the group chat. Go on to the group chat. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to do it. This is a bit risky on my part, but no, you know, I, yeah, I, you I need to bring get... on screen, can't you? Yeah, if you need to, to take risks to to get a reward. Yeah. Um. So I've just put the Streamyard link in. So anybody that's watching <laughs> this live right now can hit that link and they can join us. I mean, so if so if Larry wants to come on and because obviously he's just made that point about we're too weak. Yeah. We're too weak to be to be good in the Premier League, and I'm disagreeing with him respectfully. I'm not going to get in an argument with him, but I respectfully disagree. I don't think that seventh in the Premier League is bad. I think seventh no. in the Premier League after 35 games is pretty good. I think semi-finals of the Europa League is pretty good. To do them side by side, I know what he's saying. We do we do have a thin squad in terms of numbers, yeah. in terms of quality, but that's where we are right now. Yeah. Where we are after 38 games, where we are when the when the Europa League is handed out. Hi, Luke. Hope you're well. Who knows? But like I say, I, I just respectfully, I don't agree with that statement of Lawrence. And if Lawrence wants to come on and, and put maybe put a little bit more uh, context to that statement, he might make me go, oh, OK, I can kind of see where you're coming from. I don't agree with it, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. That's why I love these these streams, you know, because I can listen to. I can listen to sort of people's arguments, opinions, yeah. whatever, and I can go, I still don't agree with it, but I can see where you're coming from. So, you know, yeah. it is is what it is. Um, the group chat, Walshy, it's it's one that was set up by, I think it was you to set it up, wasn't it, Budgie? For it was, with, yeah. the, all the guys that are, well, not all the guys, but a lot of guys that are, have YouTube channels. And, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's mainly... You know, YouTube. <laughs> people, you, you, know, you will know. be if Mike Dean's refereeing, Duke, that's for sure. Listen, how comes he needs the link? Surely he's got a, a key to the door. It's on, it's, it's, on, it's on the group chat, Duke. And as I say, I've, I've just put the, um, the StreamYard link in the live chat. Come on. Come on. Join us. Look at um, Luke's comment. The Duke oh, is hang on. Hang on. The he's... Uh, we're not we're not gonna talk about the match today. As I say, we're gonna cover that in the match reviews, which Duke and I will be doing tomorrow. Yeah. So we're gonna try and stay away from the match today in and of itself. As I yeah. say, for now, I'm making the, the the hypothesis, if you will, that these two seasons that we're having, this season and the previous one, mm -hmm. I would argue are our greatest back to back seasons in our history. Even if we I would say even if we finished eighth and didn't lift the Europa League, I would still maintain that your, your, your your league is bread and butter. Your league is bread and butter. And if we can finish sixth followed by eighth, tell me yeah. another two seasons that we've done that. And if we've had a European competition where we've gone deep, that makes it even more impressive. <laughs> Duke! Rob said deep. What? You said deep. You like that, don't you? What, when it goes deep? I mean, he, he likes going deep, there. this no boy. Sorry, I've got to keep my camera off because I'm up and down the bar. I'm, I'm Are you still? Still working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got that. Yeah. For the pub I don't know, pub yeah. shot. I'm close. Yeah. Jump down. There you go. What, what are your <laughs> thoughts, dude? I just had a beep. I just had a beep. Who's, who's rocking? Well, who's, oh, look at Legend. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, the, listen, the, the squad, listen, the squad is, as, as you put, and, and again, no disrespect to Larry and what Larry said today. Mm. Now, the squad has been good enough 
to do what we've done with it, i.e. semi-final of the Europa League. Um, we are one win away from, um, you know, a, uh, the, the final. Yep. Um, and we're, we're currently, what, seventh in the Premier League. Okay. Correct. So quite clearly, as, as you said, and, and respectfully um, disagreeing with, with what Larry put, is the squad yeah. is quite clearly capable of managing, managing to do what we've done with the squad. It's quite clear that it can. What we can't do is we cannot push on with what we have, okay? Mm. Now, maybe that's what Larry might be referring to, okay? Larry Possibly. might be referring to the fact that we can't push on from currently where we're at. And, 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 I, and I feel then, if that's what he's getting at, and I don't want to be putting words in Larry's mouth, mm -hmm. yep. if, that's what he's, if that's what he's getting at, then he's right. We cannot yeah. push on with what we have, you know, once, and, and, and you know what, next season, maybe the season after when the others start to strengthen around us and they spend a bit more money, et cetera, et cetera, then yes, we might struggle to, to continue with, with what we've done um, yeah. unless we have the influx and strengthening that the other teams are going to do. But... You know, I, I, I disagree with, with how Larry worded it, but if what he meant was pushing on and, you know, maybe taking it to the next level, then, then yes, I agree with that. That's, mm. you know, I, well, I really do think that Larry would just, struggle to try and push on. And, and Larry, so as I say, if, if, you wanna, if you want to come in and, and articulate your point verbally, the, the StreamYard link's in the chat. Please feel free to come on. As I say, I'm not digging you out. I'm respectfully disagreeing with what you put earlier, but I'm just going to read this. Gatesy, what I am saying, if you are content with seven, cheers, but I am not. Seventh, cheers, but I am not. Um, I want more, and if we imp I've improved our squad, we would be better. We all know this without improvement. Yes, but right. in, in, but that, in that wasn't... what we're talking that what we're talking what was about, set, Larry, is in terms of our history, in terms of what's gone yeah, no. before. No, listen, with, with, with the squad we have, with the squad we have, we've managed to do exactly what we said we could do. We've, we've competed in Europe and we've competed in the Premier League. No oh. one said anything about strengthening. I mentioned strengthening next season and hopefully mm -hmm. we can push on with some good strength. And then we can we also the the but, in the FA Cup, or was it the Carabao Cup? That was the Carabao League, League Cup. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, oh, oh. All, for all intents and purposes, this, <laughs> in my opinion, this is a good season. There, there, there's nothing. This season is nothing to be sniffed at in the grand scheme of things. This is nothing no. to be sniffed at. This should be celebrated, as as I said. On previous streams with you, Gatesy, and I'll shut up in a second and, and let you let Luke talk because I'm very conscious that I do this quite often. Um, if you'd said to me at the start of the season, here you go, boys, this is what you're going to have, I would have ripped your arm off. As you've said before, Gatesy, on other streams, this is something that's unheard of for us, is, is two back-to-back -back finishes above, you know, seventh place in the Premier League. Not only that, you throw in, as Budgie said, Quarter final of the League Cup, throw in, as I said, semi final of the Europa League. This is a successful season, regardless of, of our strong ass squad. It's regardless of I, I think it's a whether you're content. Season. Yeah, go on. Contentment isn't a case of anything else. You've got to look at where. Oh. No. Still there, Duke. I'm content with seventh this season all day long. Yes, I am. Yeah. Luke. Hello, boys. Are we, all right? are, are we Hello, witnessing? Luke. Are we witnessing the greatest back-to-back -back seasons in our history? And I and I appreciate that everybody will measure success in, in okay. using okay. a different okay. yardstick. For me personally, saying, I I think it's if league you're saying Premier League history, unequivocally. Well, I'm I'm talking I mean, I, in our in our history period. I mean, I don't, I can't talk about because history goes back a long way. I, th I think that winning the FA Cup, then winning the, the Euro European Cup Winners' Cup, mm -hmm. is probably uh, 
you know, it's yeah. yeah. But certainly in my in my lifetime, in <laughs> no, your life, that. <laughs> no, that's that's so, true. Don't say in his lifetime, Luke. He was there for the FA Cup, the World Cup. Oh, here we go. I knew, I knew this would happen. No, I, was, I said to Budgie, though, earlier, we, we finished in, in the league. We finished 14th was. when we won the FA Cup. And we finished 9th when we won the Cup Winners' Yacht Cup the following season. So, league-wise, it wasn't as good as this. I appreciate we picked up two pots in two seasons, but... OK, I'll, I'll, what I would oh, say is... Um, we won the World Cup. In terms yeah. of... In terms of league, in terms of league, we're tougher to beat, but we're not as fun to watch. Does that make sense? It, it, in it's not as fun to watch compared to what? When we, when we would lose three two away to West Bromwich Albion or or, or or alike, it was as I'm saying we are we are now in a position where we are incredibly tough to beat, and that's thanks to David Moyes. He we. We did live off quite a few, a few years of um, the best thing we should do is buy the best players we can, put them on the pitch and see what they can do. Whereas David Moyes does now have... We, we've got a plan about West Ham, haven't we? Yeah. We know what we're going to do, whereas previously, we may have lost 3-2, but we sort of, in the commas, had players that were more fun to watch. Does that make sense? We're a bit better right. on the arm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, last time... Like, mate, hey, if someone said to me three years ago, you're going to finish seventh, uh, sixth, then seventh, qualify for Europe, and you'll go quite far in one of those competitions to the semi-final, I yeah. would have said, um, I would quite like the drugs you're on, and if I could get them <laughs> at the right price, can you buy a lot? Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, here, you we had... Sorry, sorry, Jason, sorry, can I just... I just, just just a quick question, sir, to all yes. three of you. Actually, of course. Like we all we all had the discussion at the start of the season, and, and Luke and, and Budgie. I'm pretty sure yeah, you yeah. were on the streams, and probably so were the other guys. Um, you know, Larry and, and everyone else. I think they were all on streams, and I'm not quite sure who said what, but I do remember I said, you know what, if we won, if we won the the, the Europa League, I'd be quite happy to finish you know, 15th, 16th, 17th, you know, and win a trophy. I, now, I, I, was quite, not... I was quite surprised about how easy, in inverted commas, the, the first half of our Europa League journey was. That group stage, I was expecting it to be a lot more difficult than we made it. And I don't know if that gave us false perspective. I mean, I, to I be thought... honest with you, mate, I, I I, I'd go as far as say, in agreement with you, I'd go as far as say, though, that we've we've made, we, we've actually made it in, in points look a lot easier, you know, than it probably should have been. You know, the, 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 the win at home against Seville, I know it took us extra time, but they didn't look like they troubled us to me. And then the win against Leon away, again, we, we did the first leg with 10 men, and, and and we spanked him away and, and listen, other than once, well, he's not even so there, I think we've been better away from home. home. I go going as far as say that. Comment, yeah, go on. Going back to Larry's comment about we need be, we need better players. I don't I just think maybe if that gives a bit of false perspective, so that we're going to January, <laughs> and I do I do have to say, and we all would say it, if we had those two extra bodies now. It would have made a vast difference to our league form where we've lost, what is it, five out of eight? Yeah. We may not have won them, but it would, they may have made a difference, certainly yeah. today. But this, I mean, sort of like just to sort of clarify, Hammerhead, this isn't about today. This is not about today. This is about the season so far bolted on to last season when we finished sixth. And I'm making the statement. Or, or asking the question, is this the greatest back-to-back -back seasons in our history? The only two seasons that I think we could argue might be as good or possibly better would be the 63-64 season when we won the FA Cup, although we finished 14th, I think I said, and 64-65 when we won the Cup Winners' Cup, but we finished ninth in the league. And Did then we, if you fast forward we, to the seasons um, I've got here, 
seasons 97, 98, when we finished eighth, and season 98, 99, when we finished fifth. Yes, we didn't win a trophy, but in terms of our league placing, it's the only time in our history when we've had consecutive seasons when we finished eighth or better in top flight. I may have got my I may have got it wrong, but did we come up under Pardew and then yes. go to the, the, the final the next season? Yes. Or was there a season in between? There wasn't. No, no, no. We, 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 lost, the we lost the playoff final to Crystal Palace. We mm-hmm. won the pick the following year the playoff final against Preston. And then the following year we had the uh the game against Liverpool, which I'd rather not talk about. Well, yeah, no, I think we yeah. Quite high up that season, so that's probably we did. Pat, our that last is true. Two seasons, but in 1966, I'm just going to wind back in 1966. Pat, and good evening to you, sir. In the league, we finished 12th, and we were semi finalists in the Cup Winners' Cup. And run, he's right. We were runners up in the in the League Cup, but the League Cup then was not a a final. It was it was a two legger. Um, whether that makes any difference. It is it is up to you, Larry? Larry, hey, how are hello. you, sir? Hello, everyone. Thanks well, for taking yeah. up the invite. Well, yeah, I was cooking, but I had to come on because I guess my statement got uh, everybody kind of up proud. What I was trying to say, Gatesy, and, and and everything like that. It's, it's no disrespect to our team. I love it. I'm mm-hmm. I'm hungry today. I really wanted to win. <laughs> I was disappointed we lost. But but the biggest thing is what I'm trying to say is for our lineup. And our bench, we cannot compete successfully in both areas, yeah. in Europa and, and Premier League. That's what I, all I'm saying is, cause, and we're seeing that right now. If you, I would love someone to go back and look, look at our stats, probably from December to January to now, and what's our win and loss ratio in the Premier League. So Agreed. I'm not, and I'm I'm not hating because I that's our squad. I love them, but mm-hmm. it's we don't. I don't know if it was a January window. I don't know if it was a summer window. It could be a combination of both. But we have not mm. stacked our lineup. Moyes does not want to try our talent in the under-21 or 23 league to try to improve this. So we are, I don't want to say stagnated, but we know what we got. We all know if uh, when we got the lineup out there, who do we have on the bench that can come up and improve us? Today, you know, we tried to rest some people. Suchek came on, didn't do very well. And Tony came on, was it too late? Mm. So that's what I'm tr- that's all I'm trying to say is that I don't think with the lineup we have, we can be competitive <laughs> in both rares. And you're tr- and you guys know me, Budgie. All but you would guys, you not say we are being competitive by being no, the seventh and, after and, and 35 games of the Premier League and in the semi finals of the Europa? Good. Would you say and that's I, not competitive? No, and Gatesy, that's what I wanted to say to all three, all four of you guys, actually, is that you guys are the masters of the West Ham. I joined in 2019, so I am jaded, I guess, because we were struggling then and we've done great. So you guys been through years of struggling, so you're totally right. You're right, Gatesy. It, it is. Can I'm, I... not, I'm not part Sorry, of Larry. That. Just, just a quick question for you, if, if yes, I may. Sir. Yeah. Um... And again, not again, not digging anyone out. Not I'm just I'm just asking the question because I'd be interested to know what what your answer is. People in the chat, I'm, I'm not going to read the chat because I'm, I'm running around the pub doing this. But would you? I mean, your your comment of obviously um, essentially not competing. The fact that we're we're not in the greatest run of form per se at the moment. Yeah. Obviously, with with you know the. I think we've lost our last four in all competitions. And, and, and you know, really, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, where people are not happy, rather, rather. But, yeah. you know, and then obviously yourself saying that, we're, you know, unable to compete, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And again, respectfully, I'm asking the question. Um, we've already competed. The fact that we've lost and we're not picking up the point is not, you know, we feel we, sh- we, feel we should be as a club, okay, i.e., you know, the point last yeah. week against Liverpool, uh, sorry, against Chelsea, the game against Arsenal today, the games against Frankfurt, you know, etc. Yeah. Yeah. But we obviously have competed because we are in a we we are in a quite a dire run of form at the minute. There's a, you know, you can't deny that. But the fact that we're no. not dropping like a stone through the league because we already competed, we've already done essentially, in my opinion, 
the hard work of getting to where we are, i.e. sixth, seventh in the league. We've lost a few games. You know, it looks a bit ropey right now. But we, we did the hard work at the early part of the season to be able to compete. You know, when the games were coming a lot quicker, because yeah. you had the League Cup, you had the FA Cup, you had Europa League every every Thursday, or you had a you know, Carabao Cup game on a Wednesday. We'd already I'm competed, which is why we're doing, doing so well and we haven't fallen like a stone. So would you agree then, in, in that sense, that we've already done the hard part of competing when it was difficult? Yes, the players are a little bit tired, but we are in a position of, well, we've done the hard, essentially, well, wow, how I feel, isn't it? we've already done the hard work. Would you agree with that? And that's why we're not, we haven't dropped like a stone through the league because we already put, um, we already put ourselves in a good position in the early part of the season. That, you just said at the end right there. We did it at the end of the early part of the season, Duke, and I totally agree with that. The thing what we had was we were worried about was we have no depth or, depth on the bench. So what we did as West Ham, which was great, was we were good at the beginning of the season. So I would love us to look up, pull up the stats, Gatesy, if you want, and say how well were we winning and points wise at the beginning of the season, and how well we are now from January to April. That's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to be a critic. I'm, I'm a West Ham fan. I love him, hmm. but I'm just trying to be a realist. We have fallen off so much. And the one thing that we thought about Duke, and I thought this, and we all said this, was we were worried because if this happens, which we knew it would, injuries, so forth, we have no bench to recover from them. The Diop, the uh, Bagana, all that stuff is we have nobody else to, to sub into. That's all I'm trying to say is. And, and, you know, and um, week might, I'm sorry, Duke, the week might have been a bad on. term, but it's true. It's very true. We cannot compete with our lineup and our backups in both leagues. And we're seeing it right now. I'm glad that we're doing great in Europa. I want to do it because, you know, traditionally, you guys, like you said, how long is – I love the trophy, but we are failing in Premier League. But then we again, what we could even if we finished well. seventh, this league, seventh this season well, without Europa League, would you have considered Duke, that Duke, to be a failure? No. Uh, Duke, 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 you're, you're, you're totally right, Duke. You're to no, I'm sorry, Luke. I'll let you talk. But you're right. It's not a failure. And I'm not trying to be the Mr. Naysayer. You're right. This is great things. But I, what, I guess it doesn't frustrate me. It was like I see the potential. How's that? You know? Because you're totally right, Duke. And, uh, and all hands down. Seventh and go to Europa League semifinals to the finals. Even that, that's awesome. But I just – what kind of scratches my itch is that we could have done a little bit better if we had more of the things. But you're totally right. I, I agree, Duke. I'm not trying to hate on anybody. Trust me. I love my West Ham team. I love them to death. But I just... Larry, I was, anything... I was just going to, Larry, I was just going to say, to be dev, devil's advocate, this happened at exactly the same stage last season. True. I'll, I'll dip him. And uh, as I say, if you, what do they say? If you do the same thing and expect different results, so isn't I'm that admit. a sign of... Man, but so, I, but, look, but Luke, it I happened think... happened exactly the same last season where we didn't get those extra... Two players, but I'm not. I'm not. As I say, same as Larry. We are being, as I say, I'll take bite your hand off. But we're football fans. We're always yeah, that I'm little bit more. Right? We're so very can selfish. I, yeah. Can I make very point selfish. On that? Yeah, I agree. I'm not. Please to do. On please do, Budgie. Yeah, I I think that I, I noticed a comment from Kieran just a minute ago saying two consistent seasons. Yeah, is a sign of success. He's been around for a little while. With all due respect to Kieran, I don't. Well, he's I don't the same age as me. He's only about five or eight months older than me. So yeah, you know, we've kind of. He's been around ages. Yeah, yeah, go on. <laughs> but I think that I it's think like that, Jesus. Yeah, I think that um, you know, two consistent seasons that is a sign of success. The fact that we're doing so yeah. well in the in the Europa League and that we're in the semi final with a decent shout of getting into the final and winning it. In my opinion, um, and the fact that we are still maintaining seventh in the league at this moment in time, yeah, I believe that we have done that in spite of our small squad, rather than you know, uh, as, of. as a consequence yeah. of it. I think we've done it because of the fact that we only have a small squad, and I do believe that. And I believe that you know, many hands make light work. Yeah, maybe they do. Right, but I also believe that a, a, a smaller, dedicated team gets the job done. Yeah, true. 
But and you can only that, cut, you can only that, cut your cloth how I feel orbitally. We're doing what we're doing. The thing but, is, you, but, guys, the, 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 the truth is you can only cut your cloth accordingly. Now, yes. let's be honest about it. Manchester City are bankrolled by a by a country, an oil-rich country. We're not going to compete on the same level as them ever. Yeah. Chelsea, for the last 20 years, obviously Abramovich now is is sort of like on his way I'm out. Wondering. He's he's not Prejudice. going to be replaced by someone with £2.50 in his back pocket. He's going to be... Re- they're talking about Jim Ratcliffe. Now, Jim Ratcliffe, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, is actually richer than Roman Abramovich anyway. So and also Gates, with Chelsea, you know, you're buying an infrastructure that's set yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. You've got Manchester yeah, United also, who are a... sorry. Not just, but, but I was what I was going to say there, Gates, is Abramovich didn't run it, and and I, I might be wrong. Okay, I might be wrong on this front. But Abramovich didn't run it like a business where he wanted, you know, a dividend at the end of it. No. These these consortiums are not well, in he's it. Left it with or... a two billion pound. Um, debt that he was owed but yeah, he wrote yeah. that off but he's wrote it off so then the question is are these guys coming in are they looking to run it and mm. take dividends out of the, you, you see well, what I mean this is not yeah, going to be but, but as what I'm saying is as I reasons, think the Chelsea fans think but the reason I'm, I'm bringing them up because I want to try and keep it yeah, on yeah. topic of, of West Ham and not de- veer off yeah, yeah. the reason no, why no, I, I, agree, I yeah. just veered off is, is because what has to be realised and this is not me trying to be defeatist or anything like that. But what I'm saying is, is you have to appreciate that there's there's certain places in the Premier League that realistically we're not going to compete for. Now, I know some people will turn around and go, what about Leicester? But Leicester is a once-in-a-generation occurrence. More often than not, yeah. those top six places in the Premier League are going to be occupied by Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea... Arsenal, Tottenham, and well, the thing is, if I may, I respectfully disagree. I respectfully disagree, Mr. Gates. Okay. Um, and the reason being is we've proved (laughs) we've proved for two seasons that we can push those top six with a little bit of investment. We can push those top six now. But do they don't want us to? Duke, you know what you're saying right there? You're exactly saying what I was trying to say before. We can't do it without what I said before. We're weak enough because we have no bench. We can do that if we invest the money. And that's what I was trying to say. I wasn't even going to go down that road. I was going to say we can compete, but they don't want us to. Okay, we've proven. right? That's true. Yeah, I do. The the Premier League and and, and the rest of it, Rob. I'm sorry, but today, and I I put this – out as, I put this out as a forged tweet. I didn't even put this out as on, on my own personal account. I put this out as a forged tweet earlier. Today, Uh-oh. with what I saw at that game today, I find it very difficult to argue against a big six bias. I find it very difficult to argue against the conspiracy. that I believe is there true. anyway, but I find it very difficult to argue against it. Because yeah. Sky Sports, you know, there's a lot of money involved in the Premier League. Sky Sports spend billions every season, right? Now, there is, I don't, I, I, um, you know, Hammerhead says there about the agenda. I believe well, there is. I really do believe there is an agenda against our club. Now, people might think I'm fucking idiotic or whatever, but I don't think it's just against our little West Ham. I think there's an agenda against anyone that isn't Man City, Man U, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool or Spurs. I really do believe that there is something that, or some people that are trying to stop anyone else breaking into that. And today makes it a very difficult argument to argue against that big six bias. That was all day... A fucking horrible attempt at a challenge by Ramsdale. He was not in control. His studs were up. It was reckless and it was dangerous. By the letter of the law, that's a red card. Whether or not Jared Bowen threw himself out of the way to save his fucking career, that is still a reckless challenge. Yeah. Out we, of control, we agree. A straight, we, we're getting a little bit off topic. Goal was, though, Duke. We're talking about. I know about we are, but I, all I'm saying is, totally agree. No, no, but what no, I want to no, get no. at is there is a bias, Rob. 
there is a bias, and you're there going. There's a there's an unconscious we, bias. I'd agree with you. I don't I don't believe. That I, mean, mate, I don't even think it's plot. unconscious. Mm. I don't even think it's an unconscious. I'm not being funny. Look at look at Everton last week, mate. It's, the, it's um, deliberate. I agree. It's a, a deliberate. It seems like. like oh, sorry, with a penalty when Gordon went down. I'm telling you now. I watched that 27 times. That there was contact. There was contact. Okay, um, I watched it. Then you look at the, the Dawson thing, and it's not a penalty. Now, I know that that doesn't, um, that doesn't affect the outcome of the game because it was a red card. I've, we've, we've had that, and I've agreed. But the fact that there is this, it's not even an unconscious bias, Rob. They want to keep the big six in and keep them happy because they don't want them then going off and making their own Super League. I shared a tweet earlier, retweeted it. We might as well... The rest of the uh, how many other teams are we talking? We're talking fourteen teams 14. in the Premier League, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, 14, yeah, yeah. We might as well between the fourteen of us go and forge a seventh place trophy and consider that to be the best of the rest. Because until you know, that Leicester didn't give the big six any op to give the FA and the, oh, the sorry the Premier League and the um, and Sky Sports any choice because they kept winning their games. They kept winning games, winning games, winning games. There was no um, kind of... Actually, um, just, just on that, Henry, no, he won't. No, he good. won't. Pissed off, I can't stand him. Um, Fuck, uh, no, uh, not, sorry. Not, 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 not according to an interview I heard anyway. He's retired. You know, they, they don't want anyone breaking into that. They don't want that monopoly because they want to keep... They want to keep the big six happy because they don't want them running off like they nearly did earlier this season. Now, listen, I'm quite happy that, if, if, you know, if that's the case, fucking come out and say it. Stop, stop dicking around with, you know, a, what should have been a straight red, but it's Arsenal, they're top six. Don't, worry. don't even get looked at by VAR. Um, the, 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 um, the penalty last week, it's given a penalty. The referee's given an on-field decision. And then, he, you know, the VAR have gone, hold up, the kids got it wrong. Yeah. Because it's Chelsea. Liverpool, can, the penalty just, against Everton, it's we, a clear penalty. We're going it's, it's way it. off. We're going way off topic. We're talking about back, our back-to-back seasons. We're not talking about. Yeah, but we're never going to. No, yeah, but you can talk about the back-to-back seasons, but we're never going to do any better until the bias comes off. There you go. Hmm. I I would argue that this we are witnessing our best back-to-back seasons. Like I say, I think there's only two. Occasions in our history that are directly comparable, as I say, 60, 64, 65, and 90, 98, 99. I think it was. I said, Well, we finished eighth and fifth in the top flight. I'm struggling to see a point in our history where there's two seasons consecutively where I could make the case that. No, I agree. I agree. I agree, Gatesy. Uh, in terms of league performance, this is good, but isn't there a bit of you? The, the last uh, staying up on the last day of the season. I know it's not much fun, but when you do it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we're, uh, yeah, we're West Ham fans. We don't win much. We're seven. Uh, yeah, it'd be brilliant if we just, as Duke said earlier, if we can, if we can turn over Frankfurt, mm. even if we lose gloriously and finish seventh. I know it's not a trophy. I know it's in the Farmers League, but. We, we, uh, that's got to be brilliant, and I won't go into the conspiracy because I don't believe it as much as others do. Mm. But I always say that you finish almost as much as where your sort of your your wages, how much you pay in wages, is where the league table should finish. I'd agree with that statement. And mm. we are competing against Arsenal that have been brilliant and are in a lull. <laughs> Tottenham, uh, we, I know we hate them, but they're a very well-run club and they've always got decent players. And I know that it doesn't nice, but they've always been a little bit better than us. We're playing against <laughs> Chelsea, who are a beam off. Liverpool at the moment are just like, they're, they're, they are, they're, if, if I was supporting Liverpool at the moment, winning stuff and playing like that, mm. oh my God, I'd, I'd be in the I'd be happiest state in the world. Man City that are paying ridiculous amount of money. We're competing with those. And then you've got those teams below us that are also paying a lot of money. So the Villas are paid money. Wolves, look where Villa are. Wolves, etc., etc. 
And whilst we are the position we are, we have been very lucky that those teams below us have all been beating each other. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. So I would say we, yeah, best if at the end of the day, looking, you look at the numbers. This will, if we finish seventh, Europa League, whatever we do, it's been brilliant. And if we finish seventh or above, those are our, that that is, as you say, probably our greatest back-to-back seasons in in our history. Yeah, I mean, but, I'd argue, uh, Luke, that you know, when it comes to uh, like what you say about you know what you play is where you play, basically. Um, I, I reckon that there that there's a lot of lot of foundation in that, but I also feel that there's there's exceptions to that rule as well because. I mean, you look at Pep Guardiola, for argument's sake, as a manager. Mm-hmm. He's on he's on some astronomical wage, mm-hmm. um, and he's expected to win. He's expected to win the league. He's expected, you know, and the reason he's expected to do that is because he's consistently done that throughout his career at a very high level as a manager. Agreed. Now, David Moyes hasn't. David Moyes has always been a nearly man. When it comes to Wally. success, um, hi Wally. Uh, he, uh, David Moyes, has always been like a nearly man. He's always been a middle of the road kind of manager, mm. and now he's excelling. He's now he's done his like twenty year apprenticeship, if you like, and now the man's out there on his own doing it. And I, I feel that the fact that he's had two reasonably successful league. Um, seasons back to back like this and the fact that we are in the uh, Europa League semi-final and that, I would say that you know, pound for pound, you know penny for penny, David Moyes has had a more successful season than Pep Guardiola Well he's can not I, being ranked re- by a country is he? Hey? Well, no, also, no, I can I respectfully disagree only in so much as David Moyes is getting the best Getting the best, getting the best out of decent players. Yeah, Pep Guardiola is keeping multi-millionaires, top class, top class players at the top of the game week in week out like clock. I'm not one hundred percent that David Moyes could do what those two do. Mm. But I think that David Moyes is probably the best manager that we could get at this time. In our history, with the with what we've got to work with, I mean, if we what were bankrolled by if we were yeah, no, we, by a country like what Man City are or Newcastle are or Paris yeah. Saint Germain well, are, all, then obviously well, we'd be about. looking at a higher calibre caliber of manager because we'd have a higher calibre of players coming through the door. Well, well, then all the West Ham fans need to go out, go out there and buy ten dildos each, and we can <laughs> reap the money. Can't we? How do you know I haven't already, Luke? <laughs> no, but as I'm saying, it's it's levels, yeah. As you say, David yeah. Moyes. I think David Moyes is the best, best for West Ham. My God, we were a shambles, weren't we? We needed someone to say to someone to to our mat to our owners. I don't want this rubbish player of mm. which you're offering me. I want a decent player, and we. That's the, you've got with David Moyes. There's a negative and there's a massive positive, yeah, and it's true. eighty twenty. It's, and it's that twenty percent that unfortunately Moyes can't do, and he's unfortunately proven that he needs to buy a striker, and we all know that is his blind spot. He can set up a defence to never concede a goal for a year. He can do that, but it's that it's once you get up past the halfway line, we all know that's where Moyes has a little bit of a failing. So we're always yeah. with Moyes. We're always going to be. But I mean, then that's that stat, where Rob Newman should step in. That stat that? wasn't there that we, we didn't lose a game by more than one goal for over a year. Yeah. That's very Moyes. And that's brilliant because we used to get humped every which way till Sunday, sometimes away up north. Yeah. But as you talked about dildos oh, again. <laughs> well, oh, Jesus Christ! Unfortunately, it's the eighty twenty, isn't it? You're you're sacrificing the twenty to accept the eighty. So we need, unfortunately, we with Moyes, it's that and West Ham because we can't afford a seventy million pound striker. 
Yeah, let's go and buy Lukaku. Let's go and buy. Yeah, let's go and buy these players. Let's go and buy Gabriel Jesus. They're not going to come to West Ham. No, no. Yeah. not, not so, until we're competing in Champions League. As you said earlier, yeah. Casey, cut, your, cut your cloth accordingly. I Agreed. think West Ham at the moment are doing as much as they can do with the investment and the status of West Ham that they can I, do. I would argue, and, that, no, that we're, and, we're and look, that is totally correct. And that's you know what? And that's what I say, guys. That is totally correct. For what we invested in, with the players we have, we're doing great. And and that's all I was trying to say before is that. But we could do better, as we all know, if we invested more. But with that being said, like you said, Luke, I agree with that. Totally agree. Oh, I love it. It's one of those things you need to be careful though, because we've we've been in a situation before we where we've spent money that we didn't have, and we almost yeah. went out of business. You don't want to be doing that. No, and you, you also about... don't want to be doing the same or something along the lines of what Pellegrini did and spending big money on players that have no future in the club. Well, it's, it's it's about investments and, and research and who you're going to pick. Because as we all know, do you think Vlasic right now for his payroll is getting it? Is Crow is he worth what he's getting right now sitting on a bench? Got and Kitterman, he's got this and he was awful. So you're totally right. It's all about scouting getting the right people and doing all that stuff. Because right now, and with our small budget, we lost money on both of them, in my opinion. I, you know, we don't we don't have a small budget. We don't have well, a small it budget. Seems, it seems that no, way. No, no, listen. Listen. Me and Gates have spoke about this during the transfer windows. Now, I had it on good authority, and Gates has got a smile on his face. So he knows exactly where I'm going on this. Okay? I do. We turned down a thirty-five million pound offer from Liverpool for Jared Bowen. It wasn't even a conversation. They sent the email. It was all done properly by Liverpool to whom it blah blah rada rada. We make this offer. It was broken down into payments, instalments, all the rest of it. And we sent one email back, and it was a one-word email. There was not any to whom it may concern. Thank you for your offer. It was none of that bullshit. It was one yeah. word, two letters, both of them in capitals, and the word was no. Right, so we weren't willing to sell him. On the flip side of that, I said this to Gatesy um, the day before the transfer window, four days after the window closed. I was going to say, it lucky, lucky it wasn't in German for Klopp saying nine, we'd have set to the nine million pound bid. <laughs> nine million offer. Um, <laughs> Kratinsky, Kratinsky, before all this shit went down with the um, with with with, um, with Ukraine and, and Russia, yeah. Kratinsky, Kratinsky sat down with Declan Rice and asked Declan Rice who he wants. Okay? Declan Rice said he wants Calvin Phillips. Kratinsky turned around and said, I will bankroll up to £60 million for Calvin Phillips. So West Ham, on the last out of transfer window, went in with a £50 million bid at 8 o'clock in the morning. Leeds said no. West Ham went back in at 12 o'clock with a £55 million bid for Calvin Phillips. Leeds said no. At four o'clock in the afternoon, West Ham went back in with the maximum £60 million bid, to which Leeds said, come back to us in the summer. Okay? Now, <laughs> that was then, that was then reported four days, five days after the transfer window closed. That was reported because the, um, because the, uh, um, the agent of Calvin Phillips actually came out and said that West Ham had made three bids of five million. Each, each uh, offer was raised by five million quid for his, uh, for his client on the final day of the transfer window. Now, yeah. that came out. And I told Gatesy this the day before we went live on transfer deadline day that that, yeah. that was going to be the case. Now, Leeds could have quite easily accepted that bid and Calvin Phillips would have come through the door. Okay. And then we wouldn't be having the argument about whether Declan Rice is, is a better player with Suchek going forward or whatever. We wouldn't have had that conversation. But we have a we do have a transfer kitty. We do have we do have money to spend. And the fact that he is willing to bankroll, all right, we listen, we've got to work out what's gonna happen, obviously, with the, the conflict with well, sorry, the war. There's no conflict, it's a war between Russia and Ukraine, that we need to know what's going on with Kutinsky's money because we don't know where that's tied up. There's some rumours that he's tied up in, in Russian um, you know, companies and he's not going to be able to get hold of that money. But we do have. We, listen, we can. But we can you, go out we and have spend not, 70 million pounds on a player. 
But we haven't done it, dude. That's my question. I guess we, we have no, the because money. there are pl- the we players should... that Moyes wants. Um, well, you know, I, listen, I, I, I am, I am in full agreement with what David Moyes is doing. Okay, full yeah. agreement. Mm-hmm. If the player, listen, if the, he's got a, let's say he has five players that he wants, and he's and he's given them the list. Okay, and we go in for those five players. And for whatever reason, these five players don't sign. Darwin Nunez, for, for example, on the final day of the window. Um, what's the Diaz fellow? Is it Lucas Diaz at Liverpool? Oh, Diaz? I love Diaz. Give me Diaz yeah. and I'll be Now, we were in for him. World. We were I in for him, him and Liverpool went. We want him. And he went to Liverpool. Can't blame him. Not fucking around. Yeah. Um, True. True. Now, if they're, if they're two players and... They both, you know, one says, no, I'm going to Liverpool. The other one, his club say, well, we're not willing to sell at this point of the season. Moyes isn't a player, Moyes isn't a manager that's willing to let Sullivan and Gold go, OK, here's a present for you, like we did with Medibo Maiga or with Victor Rabina or whatever else came. Wellington he was Paulista, a remember him? Player. Wellington Paulista, Ilian. Listen, Moyes has Savio. a player that he wants. It's the Moise, uh, I like to he has the Moyes like MOT. To okay. <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm not I'm not saying that he wasn't a good player, but he wasn't the player that I liked Lucas wanted. Perez as well. Oh, I won't be on I, I, won't, I, I liked him. Listen, I completely I agree with you. Same with um same with um uh, 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 Hernandez, right? Loved it. But these weren't the players mm. that the managers wanted. Now Moyes has turned around and he's turned around and said to the two twats at the top, no. If you ain't getting me them, I don't want anyone else rocking up, right? Yeah. It's, it's that simple. So I agree with what Moyes is doing. He, listen, he has a player that he wants because they've passed the Moyes MOT, you know, the attitude, the work rate, not just yeah. the, the caliber yeah. of player. So I'm yeah. completely, listen, I'm, I'm completely behind Moyes on that. So it's not a case of, you know, we, we haven't strengthened. Listen. Well, we, what we oh, haven't done is just got some random toss pot in for no fucking reason. Um, maybe with Crowell. Sorry, let me rephrase that. That's not Crowell's fault. <laughs> but but we're, we're not just going out and going, screw it, we're going to get, you know, let's have a look yeah. at our last venture into Europe. You know, we went out and bought 47,000 players that were all on free transfers that were an absolute fucking waste of time. And we No, no need, we Cyber. I've already massive. seen it. You but know, Duke, you, you, you must. But Duke, you must agree that in the last year, in two thousand and twenty-one to twenty-two, mm-hmm. our signings were a blastic and crowd. We needed to do better. We need to do better. And I'm not. Uh, agree, yeah, but we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we need to uh, sign uh, someone. Add to that. We need to have something. We need to have some kind of backing because that's what's killing us right now. Because I um, mean, cr- if they're the players that Moyes wanted, okay. That's shit, and man. the other <laughs> targets that he wanted weren't available. Yeah. Then no, I completely agree with what Moise is doing. Listen, Crow is obviously not showing anything in training, a la Ben mm-hmm. Rama last season. Okay. We we had that discussion last year. Crow's obviously not doing something right. He'll go home. You know, yeah. we're looking at the cheaper option of going out and signing Nick Pope. Cheaper option or the better option than Areola? I personally think the better option than Areola. I'd rather oh, I agree with Areola. Pope than I'd rather sign Ariola. That's that's me. No, doesn't well, mean I'm, I'm right. Agree. No, I agree. With you that. know, doesn't mean I'm right. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. But grand scheme of things, if Moise's main targets aren't available and he doesn't want a fucking random, then he's right. And 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 I I, I can't you know I'm, I, I can argue until the cows come home and everyone has their own opinions and I you know I'm respectful and I'm yeah. aware and I understand other people's opinions, but yeah, I just think yeah, if he wants the player, Duke, that's the player. Duke, Duke, remember when you were 20 and you went to Ritzy's nightclub, whichever <laughs> whichever it was, and you, wanted to pull, yeah, and you wanted to pull that number one girl, if she like, buggered off with, say, Gates or Budgie, you'd, go for, you, you'd take the number two, wouldn't you? Just for let me tell you, let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. What about Larry? Come on, Larry's with me. Larry's with me in VIP. I went, I went, I went to, I went to a nightclub and got chatted to a um, a famous pop star, and it would look like it was going quite nicely. It looked like it was going quite fun. She ended up going off and marrying Jamie Redknapp. 
Yeah, there was a reason. Right, okay, guys, I am yeah. going to move I on to my next you, subject <laughs> of the day. There's <laughs> two subjects that I want to discuss. We've been talking about this for an hour, the greatest back-to-back -back seasons. Okay, we've covered that. Well, we haven't. <laughs> I think we have. We've been talking about it for an hour. That's enough. Right, okay, the next <laughs> one now. This is really where, what I wanted to talk about. This this was something that I looked at today, but it kind of dovetails with the game against Frankfurt. And Duke kind of alluded to this in the review of the Frankfurt game, Duke. I'm going to share something with the class, if I may. Let me just get rid of that. And I'm going to share this. Now, this is from Hammers News. Hang on. Press that button. And then, as if by magic, the shopkeeper arrives. Okay, now, and this mentions about the, the, the Frankfurt fans that used, apparently used Nikola Vlasic in, <laughs> inadvertently to infiltrate mm. London Stadium. Now, Duke, you saw this, didn't you? The Because um, it says here, uh, Build have lifted the lid on how 200-odd Frankfurt fans got inside the hammer's end of the London Stadium. Now, you saw this, didn't you, Duke? Right. If I'm... If I'm... Right. So, I have a... a Gator, you sent me a, a message from Walshie, who, by the way, I met today. Yep. Amazing. Um, now, I've learned some more on this, Rob, um, based on my brother's experience today at the London Stadium. So my brother, who is a uh, football development coach with um, a, a company called Advanced Player Developments, they have um, links with Manchester City. Uh, my brother also um, has links with West Ham United and all the rest of it. Personally, Rob, I wouldn't believe a word of this this um, this thing here. That's not why um, I brought it I wouldn't up. I not believe a word of it. Okay, it's not because my brother up. came around and said to me today, today he got tickets from, today he got tickets for, for the game from Umbro as part of his player, the development, developmental coach. And he said in and around him were about 30 Arsenal fans. In the West Ham. Good evening, Cyber. Sorry I didn't say hello. Um, in, in Basically, in the area that I've been led to believe is a premier away part of the ground. And I said this to you Which before, is behind Rob, the so director's box. You today, which is next to the director's box in 206 mm. and 207. It's to, mm. If you're looking up from the pitch side and looking up at um, um, uh, Russi's DJ booth, it's to the, just to the right. Now... From what my brother was telling me, that's where he was sat today in 206, and he was surrounded by other people that have been given tickets by Umbro to, um, obviously, as mm. pride gifts, you know, things like that. Now, if that's the case, that's great. But as my brother put it in a tweet, and, and he tagged Fulton Ride in it, Rob, and I retweeted it again. He tagged mm. us, he tagged Dex, he tagged West Ham, he tagged a few others. He said it felt like a second away end. He felt like Arsenal had two away support sections today. Well, the one where he was sitting and the, the other one. Well, this is why before before you go well, any further, done, buddy. Because, the, because the question, the question that I want to well, ask to the panel is: It ever acceptable for to and allow an away fan in the home end whilst they are wearing the away shirt? during a Premier League or UEFA competition. Now, it happened the other day. It was there. Duke saw it. I didn't. Duke did. But I saw it today, and I saw it twice. Now, I'm just going to give you my story of the match today. So I'm going to my seat. I'm going up the stairs, and out of the corner of my eye, I can see a family... No problem. It's a dad and two, his two sons. In the West Ham end, all three of them are in Arsenal shirts. All three of them. Now, I I have to be honest, that doesn't sit well with me. It just doesn't. Now, this so family, 
this family may not have caused any problems. They might have sat there quite happily and not drawn attention to themselves and whatever. The mere fact that they're sitting there in Arsenal shirts, however, and I find it quite... quite disappointing that there were West Ham fans in front, West Ham fans behind, and no one saw fit to ask them, are you in the right section? No one went and got a steward. No one did anything. They're sitting there, and I was watching. They were, I believe they were Japanese, because I noticed that when the name Takihiro Tomiyasu was mentioned, they got very animated and very excited, which is fine. If he's a, a, a countryman of theirs, I, I can understand that. But fundamentally, they should not have been there, number one. And number two, if, if they were going to go to an away end as Arsenal fans, I find it really stupid that they're sitting there in full Arsenal clobber. And I'm, I was, like I say, I was completely dumbfounded. Now, People may agree with this next bit. People may disagree with this next bit of what I did. But I did what I did, and I would do it again. And I'll come to that in a moment. Because I went and got a steward. And I said to the steward, excuse me, mate, we've got three Arsenal fans in my block. And he went, what? I went, we've got three Arsenal fans, all in Arsenal shirt, in the West Ham end. And he went, well, that shouldn't be. And I went, they're there, look. So he's gone up and he sort of said, excuse me, mate, you're, you're obviously Arsenal fans. And, and the guy was was obviously like, well, yeah, can't really deny it. I mean, Arsenal shirt, my sons are in Arsenal shirts. Yeah. <laughs> and and the way they went. And I never saw them again. Fine. Game started. Not a problem. And just in front of me, there's there were four empty seats. Great. Four lads come up. They sit down. Um, I didn't really notice this at first, but a, a lady that sits next to me, a friend of mine, taps me on the shoulder and she says, is that an Arsenal shirt? And I looked. And again, really? in full view yeah. of everyone, in full view of everyone, he's got an Arsenal away top with number three Tierney on the back. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, Really? And I, again, I was, I was like, this, this is not on. This is, this is taking the blatant piss. Now, I should say, I can't in all honesty say that I've never been in the away end when I've mm -hmm. been, you know, mm -hmm. I, I exactly. have done it. And I wouldn't wear your colours though, Rob. But, but no. did, I wear, did no. I wear my West Ham no. shirt? Did no. I wear my West Ham shirt? I'm not that stupid. Yeah. I've taken my wife, who is a Tottenham fan, in with me. She's been in with me at Upton Park when we played Chelsea. And she has been at London Stadium when Tottenham were playing. But neither time did she wear her Tottenham clobber. And if she had turned up and said, I'm wearing my Tottenham shirt, I'd have gone, fuck off. And she wouldn't have come in. But these morons are sitting there in full Arsenal regalia. And I'm just like, no, this is complete bollocks. So I went down and got a steward for a second time and said, mate, there's, there's another one here. And he went, what? I went, there's another Arsenal fan. So he comes up, he's, and I'm sort of pointing him there. And he says, and, I, and before, before this, I should say, I've gone up and I've, I've confronted him. I said, you're in the wrong end, mate. And he sort of like, he brushed it off, just sort of like whatever. Mm. And I was like, no, this ain't right. And there's a guy that was sitting three rows in front of me who quite coincidentally was sitting there. And he's a father that is also in the same team as my daughter. His, his daughter's in the same team as my daughter. It's quite coincidental. We didn't know we were going to be sitting there. But he saw it and he was just as appalled and, and all the rest of it. And in actual fact, I'm going to refer to Exhibit A because I don't know if you can see this. But the guy there that I've obscured his face because I don't think it's fair to sort of out him on the channel. But look. That there that he's wearing, you can see Visit Rwanda on the sleeve. That's an Arsenal kit. The Arsenal shirt, yeah. Right? So, I, like I say, he's, I confronted him. I said, you're in the wrong end, mate. And he just sort of brushed it off. Two minutes later, up comes the steward and says, blah, blah, blah. The four of them get up and, and fuck off down the stairs, right? I'm thinking, okay, see you later. Job done. 
Five minutes later, all four of them come back. The Arsenal shirt is now nowhere to be seen. And I'm like, what is uh, this? What the fuck is going on? At the end yeah. of the game, I went and got the steward that I'd seen that got rid of them. And I went, mate, what happened? And he went, what do you mean? And I turned around and said, well, that guy in the Arsenal shirt. And he went, well, they got ejected, didn't they? And I went, what do you mean they got ejected, didn't they? I went, they come up and they fucking sat in the seats again. He went, you're joking. I went, tell me what happened then. He said, well, and this guy works for London Stadium. He's not a West Ham employee. Yeah, you can't okay? point. Yeah, that's fair he's, enough. He's yeah. a London Stadium employee. He's not employed by West Ham United. And he said, well, I took them to my supervisor. And I went, okay. Then what? He said, well, as far as I was concerned, they were escorted out. I said, who's, who's the supervisor? He went, well, he's an employee of West Ham United. So what he's essentially telling me is if an employee of West Ham United has looked at this guy in an Arsenal shirt. And despite the fact that he knows that, well, the cat's out the bag and there are fans around there that clearly know you're an Arsenal fan. Just take the shirt off, mate, and fuck off back there. Make of that well, what you will. Yeah. I don't um, think it my, is acceptable. My brother, my brother, Rob, um, like I say, was surrounded by them. And told a steward that he was surrounded by Arsenal fans in the home part of the stadium. You know what the steward turned around and said? Go on. That bit, they can do what they want. Wow. And that tells That's you that, that that corporate part doesn't matter. Mm. Now, as I but said that, to you the other night, very Frankfurt, well and good yeah? until it all kicks off. Yeah. Right, and there's my point. It nearly did against Frankfurt. Now, the issue was, I saw about 25 Frankfurt fans at full time. Because I'll be honest, I walked over three blocks and gave a little bit of, you know, oi oi. Hence the reason I was walked out of the stadium. Yeah. Um, I watched them, 25 of them, take off the £25 away blue and white striped shirts and throw them on the floor, revealing underneath those shirts. Yeah, that one there, Budgie. Well done. Uh, <laughs> um, revealing underneath their Frankfurt home and away kit. Mm. And, now, and Kieran, I don't know whether you're saying that in jest, but, you know, guilty as charged. I couldn't give a fuck. Yeah, no, I make, listen, I make <laughs> you right. I, I make you completely right, Gates. See, I, I don't give a fuck. They shouldn't be there. I mean, <laughs> and if they are going to be lower. there as I am, don't that wear the fucking shirt. If they had been in the Bobby Moore lower, they wouldn't have made it out alive, mate, because the, the guys around me were such a polite bunch. Can you imagine turning up in the, in the chicken run or the North Bank in a, in a fucking Arsenal kit? Mate, my mum sat in a Bobby Moore lower when Newcastle scored in, in, in equalised in the 90th minute. Um, and she lost herself. Although she's brought up a load of uh, West Ham fans, myself, my brother, you know. <laughs> um, she is from Newcastle. Or her family, my granddad, was born in Newcastle and, and my, my whole that side of my family are Newcastle fans. And hold on, um, hold on, yeah, hold on. It, it, let me just let me just jump in on this one. Wally, they shouldn't be in the home end in their Arsenal kit. Regardless. Regardless. It, 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 conversation. Oh, I don't even know be what, in... what, what happens in American sports and all the rest of it. In England, Easy. you don't go in the home end wearing the away kit. You just don't. It's, no, but it's, it doesn't Gatesy. happen. Oh, Gatesy, can I play devil's advocate, mate? Again, football has been gentrified and us fans maybe haven't kept up with it. As you said, they were a family of Japanese. Mm. They thought they That's were just... That's true, I. They true just right. thought they were going it's to... Not in, match, it's mate. not in English football. You don't... You, I don't I, I, again, mate, again, mate, I don't disagree, but football has been so gentrified towards the middle classes, these people are just out for a day like they like they would do to Legoland, say, with their really, family. Really doesn't happen at any other stadium though, mate. I've not I've not seen any complaints from any other fan base. And and I've let's got, be I've honest, got, I've, got, I've, got a mate who's a, I've got a mate who's a season ticket holder at um Spurs. Sorry. Um and he tells it all the time. There are so many South Koreans there just to watch Son. 
It's unbelievable because they turn up once, they go to the shop, they spend 250 quid each, and then they fuck off. And that is what football owners want now. I know it's not. Yeah, but what they're, you but want. they're they're supporting Spurs, aren't they? In the, but they'll be supporting. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll be supporting Spurs in the Spurs. You know, you've got your areas of the stadium. They're not going to be. Agreed, you're mate. Not, you know, you're not going to get. You're not going to get. Let's, for instance, Arsenal. It certainly wouldn't happen. Arsenal versus Spurs at Spurs' stadium, and you end up with like Gates he had today, a family of Japanese going and sitting in. Um, in it, it wouldn't happen. It, you wouldn't get the Koreans that are Spurs fans rocking up at the Emirates supporting Son. It's Arsenal end. It wouldn't happen. Regardless, it, it just wouldn't happen. They wouldn't allow it to happen because of the fear of that, you know, something happening to that family or to those people. You know, the fact that we've Again. not been funny. I've not been to a football ground and I haven't been to a football ground in a fucking time. But tell me what other football stadium, be it Arsenal, Spurs, Man U, Chelsea, Liverpool, um, Leicester, who sells fucking popcorn at a fo- apart from us at a football stadium? Unless I'm well out of the other stadium. We're a laughing stock because we sell popcorn. I would say every stadium, I mean, uh, the last stadium I've been to is St Mary's at Southampton. And they will sell you cheap, they'll sell you anything you will you will buy as long as, as, long as it's not alcohol, obviously. <laughs> Budgie, I, I, just, I, just, I, just think, I just don't uh, think it, I don't think it would happen. Uh, those, and that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, agree, again, yeah. I might be wrong. Let's, let's, Budgie's sitting there quite patiently. Let's be brutally honest. Let's can, be Luke, honest. Luke, 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 because Budgie's been sitting there very patiently waiting to get involved in this. Budgie, what's your He's a polite point? man. Is it is it acceptable? Because I don't I personally don't think it is. Now no. there are there obviously Wally's in the chat no. and maybe he doesn't quite understand the dynamic of English uh, football as, as intricately as you and I do. Yeah. yeah. Um now, you know, the fact that these people were clearly not of British origin, let's say. Um and were probably tourists of some description. The second guy um, was clearly not Japanese. No, no, no. But I'm talking about the first, the family. They may, as you say, they may not have known the, um, the culture and, and the history behind stuff. You know, so they may not have been aware of it. They may have just been able to get tickets for that section, etc. They et would et have walked past totally the, innocent, the gate and the stewards. But I agree that the steward did the right thing, removing them for their own safety, etc. Um, you know, I, I feel that you know, in in those kind of scenarios, that you know, like a family, yeah, remove them, put them with their own support, yeah, you know, supporters. Um, the, the four lads that went off and then came back—that's clearly a decision made by a supervisor that works for the club. Um, a wrong decision, in my opinion. You know, them guys could quite easily have been, you know, um, under some kind of, you know, threat or whatever, because obviously they've already been identified as being an Arsenal fan. Um, so the club unnecessarily put them into a potentially dangerous situation, if you ask me. So there was, there's many, there's many things there that need addressing, in my opinion. And no, it's not right for. You know, for you, that, unless you're going in into the like the home end with the intention of causing problems, there's no reason why anybody should be wearing an away shirt in a home section hmm. in the stadium, it, regardless of who the clubs are. I've not got a problem, like I say, I've not got a problem with an away fan being in the home end per Just se. Display your colours with your colours on. That's my issue. Yeah. Doing it so blatantly. And as I yeah. say, my, my point is these guys would have walked into the turnstiles, would have yeah. come past several stewards on the way, because I and all the I have to go is steward, the and you're telling me that none of these stewards picked up that hang on, they're wearing an Arsenal kit. What the fuck are they doing here? Yeah. They just let them go about their business. It's only when I've yeah. gone that ain't right. 
and pointed it out to a steward that they've gone, oh, well, we better yeah. do something about that then, hadn't we? Yeah. 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 I mean, it could have been a very unfortunate outcome, couldn't it? You know? Yeah, it could well, have been that first sure. goal went in and, you know, and they're up and down cheering and whatnot. Yeah. Well, yeah no, I've sure. not been to, I've not yeah, been to the London Stadium. Drops of alcohol down in just to take offence. Hmm. And a major problem on your hands, didn't you? And the thing I've is, not when you go London in, Stadium, they've got, they've got I've a, I've a heard poster. The, the stewarding's awful. The stewarding, I've not, as I said, I've not been to London Stadium, but I've heard the stewarding's awful because we've got this ridiculous agreement whereby the stewarding is provided by the what is it, the London Development Council, whatever they're called. Yeah, London and Legacy then, Development Council. Yeah, and then we provide. I mean, it's just so disjointed. It's 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 always ripe for an absolute shambles, isn't it? Really, because no one knows who reports to. I mean, you you used to be a, a navy man, uh, I believe, Larry. You have to have a chain of command. X goes yeah. into Y. Y goes into, and I, I just from what I hear, no one knows what's going on. And as we've proved with um, our let our. Our travels into Europe, mm. our ticketing policy is an absolute shambles, I, I, and I'm not even—I'm not even involved. I would never buy a ticket Just, to go to Wally, Frankfurt, but it's you, a you shambles. Make, you, Wally, just to sort of mark your card, um, yes, football was cleaned up. The Premier League come in. The seventies was very bad, but the protocol is you don't go into the away end as a home fan or the home fan you know vice versa wearing your colours that's the point I've got no problem with an Arsenal fan and I'm sure there were lots of Arsenal fans in the home end today but they didn't wear colours that's the crucial thing that could that could cause an awful lot of problems at yeah. football Can I ask ground. You? now maybe Can you I ask don't you? understand Can that because you're the hang on a sec Luke let me make my point Sorry, you might not understand that obviously being that side of the pond and being a little bit removed from that. And that's fine, but you just don't do it. You just don't. And if you ever want to find out, Wally, I tell you what, jump on a plane, wear your West Ham top and go to Millwall. See what happens. Let me know. Oh, I did that last hey, night. Get, oh, no, no, let me jump in. No, I'm real talking quick. Real Millwall quick. the then <laughs> oh, during a game. Okay. Let me, let let me, me know how you get quick. on, Wally. Can I jump in real quick? One go second. for it. Because I'm over the pond. And and you're totally right, uh, Gatesy, that sometimes it was that. But we changed that atmosphere about 20 years ago. You don't bash somebody up because they're in your, your in your section. Because I'm a bar. As you can see, hey, Duke, 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 well, let me finish. Duke, I'm a big Oriole fan. He's a terrible team, but he's a Red Sox fan. But the thing is, we learned that we don't do that type of stuff. So if you got to the point where it's going to be aggression because someone is wearing their colors – in your section, that's something wrong. I think it's you got to be more mature than that. I have to agree, Larry. But that's not the way that it is. You know that, Luke. I'm, I, I'm just telling no, you. Agree, facts. Agree. I'm just telling Gacy, you. Gacy, you. Gacy, my question to you is: Would you have had the same response if we were playing Norwich today? Yes. Really? They shouldn't be there. End of story. I agree. Really. <laughs> A problem. You're not getting this. You're going all Norman Collier on us. I've got more ticks than the. Got more clicks than the dog Get there in a minute. <laughs> no, yeah, if, but... as you say, I, I'm, I'm I'm halfway between Gatesy and Larry. Really, it should be what Larry says, but it is what Gatesy says, and I'm you always. You know, it's not. You yeah. know, it's. Yeah, not I know, really. mate. I'm halfway in between. You know, I should be. To put it, it, it in harmony. To put it in the context, though, really, um, mainly mainly Wally because he asked the question. But to put it into context, you know, you wouldn't expect to go into, say, 
North Korea and wave a South Korean flag. Yep. You know, something's going to happen to you. You're going to get arrested. You're going to get, you know, something is going to happen to you. It's not necessarily going to be a bad thing, but something is going to happen. You know? Oh, uh, and thing is, though, it's going to be naughty. Budgie, you know? Budgie yeah. you know I'm a dickhead. You know I'm a dickhead. Now I'm getting a flight to South Korea just to do that to prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove a point. The only thing well, I will say, and I, I, I saw the comment that, that Hammerhead that made. Is. I, I saw the point that Hammerhead made earlier about rugby's worse. I disagree. <laughs> I'll tell you an experience that I once had. I once went to Twickenham to watch the what was called the Premiership double header. It was the opening weekend of the Premiership rugby season, probably about five years ago, maybe something like that. They don't do it anymore, but. I went to it and it was, as it said, Jess, it's a double header. It was the first match, I think, was Saracens against Northampton Saints. And I think the next game was Harlequins against London Irish, if I remember, if I remember correctly. And I am a loosely a, a Harlequins fan. OK, so I got my Harlequin shirt on. I wouldn't say I, I know every single you know, result that they've had this season and blah, blah, blah. I don't follow it as much as I follow West Ham. But if I had to say which rugby team I follow, rugby union, I'd, I'd say it's Quince, OK? So I'm on the train. I'm in my Harlequins tip top, this, that and the other. And the Harlequins fans were in with the Northampton Saints fans. The Northampton Saints fans were in with the Saracens fans. The Saracens fans were in with the London Irish fans. But it got even more interesting because you didn't just have the fans of those four teams involved. There were there were people in shirts of Leicester Tigers, Newcastle Falcons, Bath Rugby, so on and so on and so on. And you could, the thing with rugby union, you can t unlike football this side of the pond. That I don't know again whether this is something Larry that you maybe don't appreciate. You can't take alcohol to your seat with you in in England. Right, you just can't. But in rugby, you can do that and quite cricket. happily. It's, it's actually and encouraged. Cricket. Yep, it's actually and encouraged. Cricket. Yeah, I said, I said yes, Luke. Um, it's actually encouraged. You take it to your, your, and so everyone's all mingling. Everyone's getting pissed, right? And we're all having a good sing song. Rugby is a completely different mentality. And I turned around to my wife. I come away from there, and I said, "Could you, and just just paint this? Could you imagine?" Opening weekend of the Premier League held at Wembley Stadium and you have Manchester United versus Liverpool and Arsenal versus Tottenham as a double header at Wembley Stadium. And there's no segregation and you can sell tickets to fans of the other clubs and you can take alcohol to your seats. Budgie, <laughs> what's happening next? About sixty thousand arrests. Thank you. Um, as I was saying, the, before, I went all in the, the, the thing is, though, on that point, <laughs> <Yeah. you> can, <laughs> on that point, Gatesy, and this is something I just wanted to mention earlier, was that in in football, it's more of a tribal mentality. And yes, that's it's very that, partisan. Yeah. And that's where it differs in like the likes of rugby and cricket and stuff. Because, well, I mean, cricket's considered a gentleman's sport and rugby is considered like a, you know, a, well... Toffs. It's, 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 it's a thugs game. It's a thugs game. They play the wrong shape like ball for a start. I mean, it's not a ball, is it? It's not a ball. A ball is round. And that's it's not a peanut. Round. Yeah, that's, yeah, there you go. That's what it is. Um, but... You know, it's um, it's a completely different mentality, as you said, Gatesy. And, you know, it, it, with football, I find that it's more tribal, you know. Yeah. Um, can, I, can I give an example of that? Yeah, um, please um, do. You may, you know, you, I, I'm from Hampshire, which is a lovely little spot down at the bottom of the, the country. That's and um, of opinion. Yes, it, it is. <laughs> it's my opinion. <laughs> and um, we've got, we do have a cricket ground, and we've, we've mm. Hampshire have got. We, we had a really awful cricket ground, and they built a lovely cricket ground. Then oh, Oasis, wow. Oasis, 
played a um, gig at the New Hampshire Cricket Ground about six to 12 months after it opened. And um, they played the gig. And then what happened was they mentioned football. And then the Southampton and the Portsmouth fans that were there also went all oh, football. Yes. And then, then what happened was they, they decided... This gig was going on, but back at the gig, these two fans, sets of fans, would kick the absolute crap out of each other for about 90 minutes. Crazy. <laughs> Did they stop <laughs> they'd all the in this lovely, lovely, lovely cricket ground on the South Downs of England with the sun shining. There's loads of beers. You can have a picnic. But they decided to kick the shit out of each other because one supported Southampton and one supported Portsmouth. Mm. And the Oasis were basically just pay, playing to an empty gig because <laughs> they were just kicking the crap out of each other. Brilliant, love it. Yeah, but yeah, I, I find I just do I do find it quite interesting because obviously Wally and Larry have both given their opinions that, and they've sort of said, "Well, why why can't you wear a a, a, a way top in the home end?" And I can appreciate that maybe it is a little bit different over the other side of the pond. I, I get that. But as I say, just this I'm side of, as well, of the... Casey, you, you I'm guessing can't. as well, I'm guessing as well, I'm guessing as well, Casey, just because of the length of travel that they don't have, as it were, away fans like we do. So possibly not. I live where I do. I could get to XYZ in a day, whereas I'm hmm. guessing Larry, if he wanted to go to Portland, whoever Portland are in Oregon, that's a flight. I'm assuming. Don't know. It's it's just interesting. It's a completely different dynamic. I mean, Larry, do you sort of like? Is so? Is it at your side of the water? Do you? It's it's quite normal f to to go and have that sort of intermingling of fans. And, and, and that's a great question. And Luke, you said that we can travel anywhere, and we hate each other's fans. And I don't think it's about the the distance to travel and stuff like that. Because I remember when I was a young man. And I used to go to baseball games. I'm a big Baltimore. I'm from Baltimore, so Oriole fan. My father Ooh. would take. Me. I know Duke would say that, <laughs> but anyway, that's okay. It's, I love you. I, lo I love you, Duke. And that's one thing. I love this conversation, guys. So I'm not trying to be confrontational because all four of you got all three, uh, four of you guys is great. But when I grew up, it was the same thing you said, uh, Gates. Is that we would go there and they would throw beer on each other. They would spit on each other. They would do all kinds of stuff in the States. And it changed, though, in later on. So I don't think it's about – I don't know. And I don't want to be rude because I'm definitely not. But it, we got to a point where that's ridiculous. You do not do that to fans. Now, you're passionate about your team. And one thing I loved about West Ham is – and that's why I think I follow it since 2019 – is that you guys in England, in London – you love your fans so passionate. I love the I love the attachment. I love talking to you guys because we're so passionate about our team. I think you guys are more passionate about teams than I've seen sometimes that we are in the U.S. But to go back to what we talked about was I would feel it'd be rude or disrespectful to do something to someone else in, in even if they were like I'm a Baltimore fan. If the Boston Red Sox fan do. Stop, say it in my box seats or something like that. I wouldn't say, "Hey, get, hey, get this son of a gun out of here." And it's different. It's just a different mindset. But it doesn't mean we like each other teams any differently. It's just how we respond to it. Because I know in the past I've seen that where the fans in the Premier League they're so passionate that they'll walk down the streets and they're ready to fight the other team. You know. The Spuds, who I hate, you know, thanks to being a West Ham fan, I do that. So it's just a different concept, I guess. And um, I'm not saying wrong or indifferent, but I think we have – we. It's, it's, it's very hard to say we. I'm not U.S. I'm just Larry. But we have changed my mindset. I won't be that way. You know what I mean? I don't like them being there. I would say it to them. I would say, come on, you eyes, and I'd do all this. I wouldn't throw beer on them. I wouldn't spit on them. I wouldn't tell them to get out of there. But I show them that you're in the wrong area, buddy. And that's what Larry, I'm to say. Larry, Larry, yes, can I, can I ask? Um, oh, look, yes, sir, you can. How, you can, Lucas. How many, how many teams do you support? So, I, if you've got a base, 
Well, see, because I've got what I'm trying to say is I've got West Ham and England, maybe a bit of Wales. Yeah, I love cricket. I love England. England. Wales, a little bit. Sorry, mate. And I love, I love cricket. So I like the England cricket team, and I like Hampshire because that's where I'm from. Yeah, I'm a bit different, basically. I don't like rugby. Couldn't care about it. I like the Olympics, blah, blah. But basically, I've got West Ham yeah, and I've got West Ham. The other ones, yeah. if, if, if Hampshire do well in, cr- in cricket or if England do well in cricket, I'm happy, but I really don't care as much as West Ham doing well. So in, 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 in America, because you've got, what, four different sports, yeah. as it were, which one is more important to you? And I, I, have you got? Have you got? Are you fan of four different disciplines, or which one's the most? As I say, you've got what basketball, gridiron, bar, uh, baseball, and hockey. I guess. Yeah, I, that, that's an awesome question, Luke. I can tell you, and I talked to the wife about that. That West Ham has became the top. They become above my football team here, uh, American football, of course, uh, baseball team, gridiron. So. And it, it has since two. I think not, I I started like the West Ham in 2019, as I told you guys, midsummer, and then it's got even more so that like I think West Ham is probably the top. Then I go with my Baltimore Ravens football. Then Duke loves it, my Baltimore Orioles, and then uh, and then some college teams. We're in Auburn, Alabama, so we're like a college football town. So I'm big into Auburn. And I, I, I'm, fr- I, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I went to Maryland. So and 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 those are it. But I can honestly tell you, Luke, that uh, West Ham is at the top of the list. I, so I, as I'm my, saying, my point is, is mate, we've got, I'm gonna I'm gonna we've, jump off. So I've got I've got to be up for work in the morning. So I'm gonna jump off. Yes, um, mate. It's been a pleasure. Um, sorry, I took All up right, an dude. hour of the first one. So I do apologise, Mr. Gates. Um, enjoy That's the rest right. of your evening. And I will pick the rest of this up tomorrow. And obviously, if I I might speak to you all individually as we go on. Take care. Right, care. care. By the way, before you go, yes, sir. yes. What time? What time are we doing the um, the match review? Uh, I was thinking if we could do it at five thirty because I know you might have thought about going to the other game tomorrow, didn't you? Maybe, possibly. Well, we'll 5 go five thirty. All right, my man. James, All right, mate. You look after you yourself. Soon. Sleep well. Take care. Right, Take night. care, buddy. All right, buddy. Oh. There you go. There you go. As as I say, I, I, I do find it quite interesting that it's viewed the other side of the pond not as as much of a taboo, not as much of a a, a sort of just just a red line that you don't cross. Like I say, in England, in in football, that is a red line. But as I say, I mean, you you mentioned cricket as well, um, Luke. I, I've been to uh, Kent, I've been to Surrey, and I went to, the, to the, the, the 100 last year that was being played at, um, at the Kennington Oval, because that's originally where I'm from, so I've got connections to the area. Oh, Even hard Kent, oh, good morning, Kent, hope you are well. Um, oh, hard cheers, you went to those awful grounds. Oh, oh steady, steady. <laughs> <laughs> but, like I say, in in those sports, and just and it's in this country, so it's not a question of, you know, I can't say that you know there are sports this side of the pond where it is acceptable for you, like I say, to mingle with fans of not just <laughs> the opposition, but of other teams that are not actually anything to do. Like I say, that that game that I went to at Twickenham for the Premiership oh, double header, there were teams that. Or there were p- supporters there of teams that weren't even playing, and like I say, they're in That's there. Ridiculous, they're all, yeah. We're all, we're all, oh no, it was great. Like I say, because rugby union, it's it's a completely different mentality to football. In like I say, in rugby union, you can have fans of all of the teams in. You're all drinking beer. You're all singing songs. Yeah. You're all taking the piss out of one another. You yeah. watch the game unfold. You you support your team, but you could be sat. Next to the fan 
a fan of the other team and, and you know that they're a fan and you give and take a little bit of banter and stick and all the rest of it. And that's fine. In rugby union, it happens. In cricket as well, Luke will tell you that you, you can get fans into mingling. And I, went, you... I went to I went to Lords and watched Hampshire play in a final against, <laughs> against it was against Kent. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and my dad got us tickets in um, in the Kent end, as it were. But, you know, it's Lords, it wasn't a big thing. And uh, we were sat behind we sat in front of um, we sat behind three Kent fans, two old guys and their sons, like me and my dad, and we were giving it. We were at all all six of us, absolutely trousered off our faces. And at the end of the day, he, all three of us, all six of us, shook hands as it were, went, "Thank you very much." We Hampshire won. They all buggered off. Makes a change. And, and we yeah, it does. <laughs> And, you know, at the end of the day, everyone was happy. We all ate pork pies, all drank beer. Yeah. You could not do that at a football match. Hmm. It's just a different, it's, it's just a different, like I say, in, in England, in football, for whatever reason, for right or wrong, for good or for ill, it's just a red line you should not cross. You, like I say, I've got no problem having an away fan in the home end. That's not my beef. My beef is, Someone that is blatantly wearing their colours, and you're like, do you think? Do you think, Gatesy, that if we, if we, sorry, I see Kieran just turned up. I'll shut up after this question. Do you think, Gatesy, if we had a pen for, I oh know it's an awful word, a pen for home supporters, where they could stand up, rip out the seat, stand up, and then, like they do in Germany, and then the rest of the what, what would you say? 60% of the stadium seats where everyone would sit and be nice to each other. But you've got this area of the stadium where if you want to be a total bell end, that's, that's your bit where you go. But the thing is, if you were a total bell end, you'd probably go where the authorities don't want you to be. Does that no, make no, sense? I mean, all, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. All the home fans go, all the home, real, real home, hardcore you, home Molly. fans go one end, and the, the rest of the ground is. Available to corporate as it was, with a little bit hived mm. off for away fans up in the. Well, let's, let's bring let's bring Kieran in because obviously he's joined us, and thank you for joining us, Kieran. I mean, obviously, as as Budgie said a little earlier, and I, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but obviously you are of a certain vintage, and you remember football in a different era. Would would that have been something that was was quite normal back then? Someone turning up at, in the North Bank or the Chicken Run in their Tottenham kit? Oh, I was going to say, Kieran. Kieran designed Stonehenge as a football pitch. Sorry, <laughs> that's that's mean. It might be true, but it's mean. We, as you know, guys, guys, we we often went away games, and uh, our intention was to get into their end. Well, I can tell you now that well, even when we got on the train, say, to go to Liverpool, Manchester or Newcastle, if you were even wearing a shirt on that train, someone on that train would fucking pull you by the side and say, get the fucking shirt off. Mm. Get it off. Because it was too dangerous to have that shirt on. Yeah. And yeah, it, you. you could not ever go into Upton Park, into the North Bank or the Chicken Run or the, or the South Bank, with an away shirt on, you came into us, you would get murdered, absolutely murdered. And we would have got murdered up there too. Yeah. Anytime we ever went into an away end up there or the, their home end, you were incognito. No one wore any colours, no one wore a scarf, no one wore a shirt. It was just the way it was. You, you know, only, only fucking idiots would, would wear colours, you yeah. know, because they know how dangerous it was. So. And, and the lads that had tattoos that denoted the club would always cover them. Always. Yeah. Always cover. Never, never show it. Do you think that this has started to creep in, though? Is, is, it, is it something that... Because Duke seems to think, and I think he might have a point, if I'm being honest, that this is something that happens at London Stadium and, and it doesn't tend to happen at other Premier League grounds because of the fact that the stewarding there is is outsourced and it's just shit and that nobody gives a flying fuck or yeah. what's your yeah, I, I think that's part of it, mate. If you so if you went to Liverpool, mate, all them stewards and everything to do with that ground, 
is diehard Liverpool fans. Yep. Now, there's no way they would let you in with a away shirt into, say, the cop. No. Nope. <laughs> they go, mate. And they'd be telling you for your own safety, do not go in there without... You can't, mate. We'll put you... Because I actually Charlie. got dragged out. I got dragged out at Liverpool. I actually got in for... I can't remember why I got the tickets. Me and my mates. Hmm. We weren't in the, where we meant to be. We were in the side, in, my, in the seating. I don't know why we couldn't get tickets. So we got in there. Oh, mate, after about 20 minutes, it was all quiet and all that. But the, the Liverpool fans clocked that we weren't fucking scousers, right? And the next thing, they started coming at us. And they started giving the abuse in their fucking face. And the next thing, the coppers come run and grabbed all four of us and said, boys, you're out of here. But they didn't just kick us out. They... They did for us in the end where the West Ham fans were. So. But here's also, just to sort of bring it to the modern day, because obviously you're talking about, because you, you went to Oz in 86, am I right? Was that correct? 86? 87, yeah. Yeah, it's all through the 70s, so, 70s and the 80s, early 80s, mate. So obviously your regular experience of, of English football is a good few years in the past. But I'd be very yeah. interested, because obviously Wally and... Larry were very surprised when I articulated my disapproval of someone wearing the away colours in the home end so blatantly. Um, in Australian sport, is it, again is is that is it quite a so partisan? Like in in you know like right. rugby union, yeah. rugby league, Aussie rules. Can you can you wear away colours in the home end, or again is that a red line? No, in rugby league here. Yeah. You you can. There is a lot of mixture of fans all over. There will be a main stand with all the home fans in it, but there will be, you'll see, they always wear their shirts, and you'll see dotted about mixture of shirts all over the ground. Yeah. But the trouble, what, the trouble what they've got with our football or their soccer and uh, is here is it's very ethnic orientated. And you, when you when you talk about where the, all the clubs started from, it's Sydney Olympic. You know, they're either Greek, right, Croatians. or Italian, or whatever. They could be uh, Arab-based. They're, they're all sort of very ethnic, which then causes an issue. So, yeah, okay. In in, in these groups, because they all come from. Because I play for Surfers Paradise Apollo, and it is a Greek club. A Greek club funded it. And uh, but once that you come into the national leagues, then all the all the, if you've got a Greek team in that area, that all the Greeks will support that club, and all the Italians will support Marconi. So then, when you go to a grand, you've got all Greeks and Italians, mate, and they want to kill each other. So that's how it works. <laughs> so there is an issue here with it, but not nowhere near like you know it is in the UK or was in the UK. I mean, you'd like to think most of it's stomped out, but it, it's it's so tribal. I think it's hard to stamp it out. It's very tribal. But to, to me, no one in in an, uh, a white shirt should come into an home man because just of the grief it might cause. You know, yeah. the headache you could cause. Some of it hurt. Then what do you do? Yeah, like I said, you know that that, that family scenario. You can understand that, and you know, I would think I would like to think that. 99% of West Ham fans would have understood that. And, you know, rightfully so. They were put with supporters, our supporters, probably. Um, so, you know, that, that out, the outcome of that was, you know, exactly as you would, would hope and you would expect. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if there, were, if there had been 15, 20 of them displaying colours, that's clearly a sign of yeah. a great well. I say aggression, you know, of, of you know, it's a, it's yeah. an offensive thing, you know. I mean, a family isn't such an issue. Those four guys that turned up and then... I still were, don't uh, think the family should have been wearing their colours, Budge. No, I think no, that was... No, uh, but like I that said, was, that know, was just like, no. That they like, don't understand that culture. Because in agreed, Japan, agreed but know, surely someone on the way, them coming on the way in should have tapped them on the shoulder and agreed, said, agreed. you're in the wrong place, yeah. mate. Agreed. And the fact that they were there... That's, that's where I'm at. That's yeah. a failure from the security team and the stewarding team and stuff yeah. like that. And like they said, would have had to walk past. I mean, I've, I've heard stories from two or three 
Tottenham fans that I know and that I talk to regularly, I've been told that when the stadium was being built, Daniel Levy insisted that none of the contractors, um, well, all of the contractors, sorry, would have to be season ticket holders at Tottenham. Um, and I've also been told that all of the um, security staff and all of the stewards and that um, are, are all Tottenham fans as well. That's what I've been told. Yeah, that's what I've been yeah. told. I wouldn't believe that at all. Nope, that's bullshit. Well, Here's my it problem. It comes from three no. different people that don't know each other. So it's not bullshit. Here's, here's my problem, though, story that's going around Tottenham, it might not be true, yeah. but it's not bullshit, Luke. Just just Sorry, on mate. this, what, what Charlie sort of said, well, he's mentioned what do we think will happen to the West Ham fans identified in the home end in Frankfurt. Uh, I think we know the answer to that. If there's West Ham fans getting in on Thursday night into the, into the home end and they're wearing <laughs> their colours and they're talking with an East London accent, they're getting their fucking heads booted in. Absolutely. I've been to a game in Germany. <laughs> you know how brilliant I am. I yes. took my wife. I took my wife to Berlin for a week's holiday, and I ensured that there was a football match involved. And I've been to Olympic <laughs> Stadium, and what they do is they gate it off. It's a. Around the Olympic Stadium in Berlin, it's completely mm. gated off. You walk through, you get patted down. You get there is there is police officers who pat you down. Anything they don't want, they chuck in a box, like water, keys, anything. You have to go in completely, as it were, only, <laughs> only at what you came in with. And you walk past them. There's dogs. And everyone gets patted down, everyone gets chucked in a box, and then you go through this perimeter and you all go in and basically, mate, they they've got dogs that shepherd the away fans into where they need to be, and they go there, and everyone can drink as much lava as they want, because once the away fan come out, they get shepherded by dogs away again. The only fight I saw in that game was two Hertha Berlin fans. Fighting each other over a two-two performance. It, it was it was just military precision, mm. mate. Military the precision. Only, the only thing mm. I'd say to this comment about same happens at LS that I find I don't know about you got you budgie when you've been and and any of you other guys. I know obviously with Larry and Kieran being where they are, it probably doesn't apply to them. But I'm a season ticket holder at London Stadium, and I find that that security cordon if you will that when you go over the bridge is it's a waste of time because they just they wave this fucking wand over you <laughs> i had and and sometimes they don't even bother doing that and they literally sort of they just they pat you down I, I wouldn't even describe it as that they sort of they they might sort of like wave their hands a couple of inches from your body and go yeah that'll do and and fuck off I mean, I'm not being funny. The last couple of games, I've seen you, you, you see the smoke bombs getting chucked onto the pitch and you're sitting there going, how did they get them into the stadium? Gatesy, not having police at a football match is like not having an ambulance at Glastonbury. I agree. Madness. I agree. And look at this Why, from Charlie, because he was there at Le in Leon. Yeah. Leon busts you in from 30 minutes away from the ground yeah. to make sure home and fa away fans don't mix. And yeah. he agrees with me that, the, the, well, I say, I, I used the security cordon because um, <laughs> it was the only words I could think of. But he says it's a stretch. And it is. The, the, yeah. the sort of security is, it might as I've well been, not be there. But yeah, I've been you're there, totally right. I've been I'm there sorry, six I... times now this season. And I have been searched never. I've been patted down once and wanded on the same yeah. occasion. Uh, and and let's be honest, Budgie. Let's, let's be honest, Budgie. If I saw you, I'm patting you down, motherfucker. For sure. For sure. Exactly. Is exactly I'm, that. I'm, and I'm, I've been patted down once. Not for business. Not for business. For pleasure. 
Oh, gosh. Larry, Larry, please do. I ain't that far from Hampshire, mate. Larry. <laughs> Larry, I think yeah. you want to say something. Uh, well, uh, Gates, what I was saying is that the process, thought process is correct, but the execution is bad. So you think, let's do all this stuff, but the people that are executing it, they're not they're not doing what they should do. To well, really they're probably protect. on minimum wage, aren't they? So they don't get it. Well, that's yeah, would thing. you? It's, yeah, also as well. Also as well. Also well. Sorry, sorry. They're on minimum wage. Would you give a shit? Well, no. exactly. And that's why I'm all about paying the people the proper amount. Pay, pay peanuts, give get a junkies. Shit. That's the old saying. Yeah, exactly. I'm all about yes. taking yes. pride in your work. Yes, Gates. Exactly, buddy. Exactly, Gates. I agree, I agree Gates. Yeah. I agree, buddy. You've got to get pride in your shit. work. But if you're just stood there getting abuse from a load of People on, and you're earning what twelve pound an hour. What? Know, what do you, you not give a shit anymore? Oh, you pay for what you get for. That's why I said. Exactly. I'm I'm what you said, the, point, I... the point you made about the police doing it should. I remember in the late seventies, you know, where West Ham got their reputation going, you know, on the inner city trains, and we all used to go early because there were football specials. Right, and they would they would probably arrive in at say we're going to Manchester Piccadilly. They'd, there's football special we'll get there at two o'clock in the afternoon, you know, give them time to get them to the ground. And we used to arrive about twelve o'clock, you know, before anything was set up. There was no police. Well, then it then we used to be. Then they cottoned on to it. So I remember getting off the train at Piccadilly, and we were met by a golden of coppers, not waiting. And as I went through the ticket. Trying, you know, they go, all right, mate, where do you think, where do you think you're fucking going? And I went, uh, oh, I've got to see my aunt. She lives in Stratford. And he said, look, you little cockney wanker. See that bus over there? <laughs> so see that bus over there? He said, you and your fucking mates are getting on there. <laughs> so they had a lot of coppers all the way to the buses. They had more waiting. And they put us on it. They drove us, stopped all the lights in the whole Manchester to get us to the ground. And as we got off the bus, there were two lines of coppers with dogs and showed us the turnstile. Now, that was better security back then, right? <laughs> it sounds like it's now. Just, you know? Well, the security is, is, like I say, it's all contractors. It's all outsourced. They're all on minimum yeah, wage. Exactly. And like I say, the... Yeah. The, the sort of the process that you go through, it's yeah, it, like I say, they might as well all pack up and fuck off home because, quite honestly, they're not worth they're they not worth their shit. uniform. They, they, they yeah, can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just there. They're, 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 there's a box that's been ticked. Yes, we've got we've got a security yeah. cordon around the stadium, exactly. Gates. It's fucking exactly. useless, but we've yep, got yep. it. Yeah, yeah, but isn't that isn't that the, isn't that the thing, though, Gates? See, this uh. This stadium was built for Olympics, which was full of nice middle class people, and then you could have put it full of sixty yeah. thousand pissed out West Ham fans. Well it, yeah. uh, Well, is it is it full of sixty thousand West Ham fans? Because this subject would tend to suggest that that might not be the not. case. <laughs> That's yeah. true. That's yeah, true. It's, it's sort of like it's maybe about sort of 50,000 and the rest are fucking day trippers. Mate, guys, we'd, we'd all love the day where you know, all fans could sit next to each other and sing, and sing Kumbaya and yeah. watch the game. That, to me, in English football is never going to happen. Not going to happen. No. When that happens, the hole up my ass will heal. Yeah. Also, Gatesy, you've got a season ticket. Mm. If I may be so bold, how much did it cost you? Uh, the beginning of this season, if I remember correctly, it was about five hundred and fifty something, maybe five sixty. Maybe uh, that is less than my. Uh, that's about equivalent to my dad pays at Southampton. Okay, and, it's, and it is nothing near what my mate plays pays for Tottenham. Hey, hey and I is that one... for nineteen games only, uh, Robert? Just nineteen. Yes, games. Nineteen home Premier League games, and that's it. That's it, right? No, you you obviously get first refusal on your your seat for cup games, be it domestic or European. But you have to get that within a certain time frame, and if you miss the deadline, then your seat could be sold to anyone. Right. Can can I, can I also say as well, your that season ticket that you pay for 
isn't very much. But um, what I'm, you know, it's one like, little point. I'm sorry, look, just to make the yeah. you know the people yeah. you say there in Arsenal shirts and that. Is that where you're sitting? Is that all season ticket holders? So are we uh, saying that we, no? You know, West Ham supporters are selling these tickets to Arsenal supporters. Or how did they get? Well, that was that was going to be the next point I was going to bring up. Um, so you've just sort of like put it back into my head. Thank you for reminding oh, me. Oh, because clear in. But we were told before the Frankfurt game, season ticket holders, this is if you're mm. cool selling your your seat or other tickets to Frankfurt fans, you will be banned. Your season right. ticket will be rescinded. Gone. Now, if that's the case. How the fuck did these Arsenal fans get into the stadium today? That's yeah. a good point right there. That's a great point. Tell DC. me. If, if, if we, if we question, season huh? ticket holders, are being yeah. threatened with being kicked out of the stadium, be great gone point. with you, don't darken London Stadium again. If we're being threatened with that for selling our tickets to Frankfurt fans, what were the Arsenal fans doing in the home end today? How did that happen? Who sold, who sold them then, guys? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Who? Yeah. How did? How did that come to happen? I, I've got no idea, and I. Yeah. It, it just beggars belief. It really does. Um, eighty-eight percent of the stadium is season ticket holders. That is, well, eighty-eight percent of the stadium is season ticket holders. Charlie, you are correct. I do wonder though, how many of that eighty-eight percent of season ticket holders are actually yeah. West Ham fans? Because mm. I will guarantee that there will be a quantity of that 88% who aren't actually West Ham fans died in the wall, but are probably f people that are fairly affluent and they live fairly locally and they go and watch West Ham play when they're yeah. playing Arsenal, when they're playing Man United, when they're playing the big teams. And then when we're playing Burnley, they probably fuck it off and, and get a few bob for it. Is that a thing? Hey, get, can, I, can, I, can I just really be honest, though, JT? If you're paying 500 and how much was it for a season ticket? Uh, my, se my season ticket was around about 560. So times that by four, that is 2,400 and for the year, I reckon I could sell that for more than I paid for it. Yeah, of course you did. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. So that's what it is because... Especially for West the big Ham games. ...are so low compared to the rest of London clubs yeah. that you're going to get the tourists. But that's exactly what happens. I've seen it. I've seen it. You, you, but, you, you get people that sort of like turn up for the big games... And you don't see them for, like I say, the, the, the games against Norwich and Watford and all yeah. the rest of it. And I'll guarantee but you they're again, not proper West Ham fans. Just... I, don't, I don't disagree, but again, the How score... Is... What, what is that per game, you know, that, uh, into 19? How much did it cost you a game, then, if you worked it out that way? Well, as I say, if, if I say it was 560 quid just for, um, just for, just for exactitude, it's £29.47, pence, roughly. Yeah, it's quite cheap, isn't it? Well, uh, Gatesy, yeah. Gatesy is £29.40. <laughs> roughly. 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 And when roughly. I first went Gatesy, it was uh, 50 pence to get into the North Bank. We are. still need to bang in over the wall. Yeah, but if that's, say that's Gatesy, that's Yeah, I'm not going to bang in him much. I'm not going in. If that's 30 quid a ticket, Gatesy, mm. and I buy four of those... I could, I could, I could double my money. Of course you could. Of course you could. You know, it's like when I've, I've, I've had it where I've been walking to the stadium, and you got, you got people literally on the, on the walk to the stadium, flogging. Yes, you know, tickets. anyone want a ticket? Anyone want a ticket? Anyone want a ticket? Guarantee, you I know, know what's going you know, on there. I, I got into Upton Park for a whole season, and it never cost me a penny. <laughs> Mm. Charlie makes a great point there. Biz businesses possibly buying a season ticket purely for entertainment purposes. Oh, look, we'll take you to a Premier League game in London. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. It could be a thing, eh? You know, and it might be that the, that the, that the person that's bought the season ticket might potentially be a, 
a, a businessman who maybe has no affiliation to any football team and he's taking a, a client along that he's trying to schmooze and all the rest of it and that person's mm-hmm. actually a Tottenham fan. Spurs. No. It's, it's no. dangerous. It's dangerous. And But as I say, no. it's not so much that that I have the issue with. Listen, if you if there's someone that's, that wants to take the client along, blah, 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 that's fine. Don't wear a fucking Tottenham shirt. Don't wear uh, a little no, wool no, shirt. No, don't wear no, no, I, I got you, Gates. I got you, Gates. It's a red flag to a pool, isn't it? You know, you, you can't be doing that, mate. You can't be fucking no. going into a, 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 a white ground and wearing your shirt in the home end. It, it's, yeah. it's, and like it's, I say, I, I'm, I'm not... You? I've taken my wife as a Tottenham fan to see West Ham Tottenham at London Stadium in the home end, but she didn't wear a She Tottenham loves shirt. an anniversary, doesn't she, Gatesy? She loves an anniversary. Absolutely. Absolutely. But as I say, she wasn't stupid enough to turn up in her Tottenham clobber. And if she had her done, like I say, I would not have I would not have let her in. That she'd have been outside and just you, know, you bug her off and go go and watch it from you know, a pub or something like that. You're not coming in the stadium, sitting next to me in the home end with your Tottenham shirt. It's just not happening. Yeah, like true. I say, there's there's certain red lines you just do not cross. And I appreciate that, as I say, Wally earlier was was quite surprised and Larry was quite surprised. But like I say, it is just a in, in England, in football, it's a red line you don't cross. In England, in rugby, in cricket, you can do that quite happily. In football? Yeah, yeah, that's why it is. That's the way it is, mate. You know, and you can sit there and, and like I say, we can all sit here, as you said earlier, Kieran, you know, it'd be very nice to think that we could all sit there and all, sort of, as you said, kumbaya and whatever, but, but it's simply That's impossible. what I was trying to say. Can I say one thing, please? Go for it, Can Larry. Can I say one thing, please? Please, one thing. I know everybody's it. talking. I am totally agree with you guys, and I'm not disagreeing. It's not kumbaya, kumbaya. That if someone sits in my area as another fan, I'm not going to like them. But I'm not going to beat the piss out of them. That's what I was trying to say. Is that, and that's the difference yeah. sometimes. And, 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 and I got you, uh, geezer. But what I'm saying, I'm not trying to dis- offend all that stuff. But no, that's no. what it was. Because back in the day, like I said, when my dad, as a youngster, took me to the game, they would throw beer on people. They would do a lot of different things. And we, I'm not going to say we're better or we evolved, but we won't allow that. But still, to this day, if I'm sitting in a, a stadium. And it's the Ravens or the Orioles, and I got a Yankee fan in there. I'm not going to be happy with that. I probably say some smart stuff to him, but it's not going to evolve into a fisticuff. So no, that's but all it, I was what, trying to say. Yeah, you're right, but the difference is here: in every ground in the UK, there is a, uh, an away fan uh, allocation of tickets, and that's yeah. where they sit. And that's the yeah. rules. That's the rules. So anyone sitting anywhere else by that are breaking the fucking rules. And gotcha. it shouldn't be allowed that, to because and you'd, and they're and rules there for their own safety. Remember and that. Geezer, and, 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 and Geezer, that's a great thing because it's a norm. The norm is that they shouldn't do that. In other places yeah. in the US, they're not doing it. So I understand it. So I'm not trying mm. to give the beef. I got you. No, but no, I this is explaining. This is how it's no, set up. You know, from, yes, sir. Because of the yes, 70s sir. and the 80s. This is how it's set up to stop most of this yeah. happening. And, and by and large, it's worked. But when you've got people sneaking into every bit, we buy tickets on there, you, you're asking for uh, more trouble, trouble to start. And you, for their own totally safety, agree. they should be where they're meant to be. <laughs> and not at all. Totally agree. Totally agree, guys. Gentlemen, totally there agree. is where we shall leave this conversation. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Budgie, Luke, Larry and Kieran. And for those Cheers, of you that are watching that have got involved in the live chat, Kent, Wally, Hammerhead, Walshy, you've all you've all contributed magnificently, and I, I appreciate your time. Uh, it's nearly one o'clock. I think probably we all bait. Well, it's probably not one o'clock where Kieran and Larry are. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so they're the lucky one, ones. Can I say one more other thing? Go for I it. I didn't want to be confrontational on any of this stuff, and I appreciate all, all you guys. So thank you very much. Come on, you guys, because at the end of the day, we're all West Ham fans. Larry, thank you. Hey, thank you. Hey, thank you. Here and by the way, at ten a.m. Ten thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Well, yeah, I'll talk to you then, bud. You will, Charlie. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'll I'm going to hit the outro, and we'll seven hours then. Yeah. Yeah.
Get some sleep. Come on, you lions. Come on, you lions.